What's up, dude? Hey, what's up, um, doctor? Uh, give me one second to try to configure this. I'm a little bit, I'm a tiny bit of a boomer. So you got to bear with me for one second, my dude. All good, I got you. If you need help um, with settings and stuff, I can help you. What's? Hello. How you doing? I'm doing well, man. How are you? I'm good. I'm good, man. I, I honestly, um, I, I, I saw, uh, well, I didn't, honestly, I'm not even going to be fake about it. I, I haven't seen anything that you've done or anything, but my moderators are telling me to ha uh, they were going to plan this for me. So I don't really know what we're doing today, but they just said it's going to be good. Okay. So um, to be complete, uh, that's, first of all, dude, I, I love your honesty, man. I'm super hyped about this. Um, so let me just explain a couple of things. Uh, simil first of all, what do you go by? Aiden. You could just call me Aiden. Aiden. Okay. Um, so let me explain to you a, a little bit about what we usually do. Um, I'm super excited. I similarly, I know it sounds kind of weird. I've seen very little of your stuff. I know you have a reputation on the internet. I'm not even sure exactly what it is, but I try very hard not to watch people's content. Um, just because anytime I have a conversation with them, I don't want to be biased by the a character on a screen. Yeah. Yeah. So let me explain to you what we do. Um, I'm a psychiatrist, but one thing that it's important for you to understand is that this is not therapy. So I'm not going to be diagnosing you, oh. treating you, prescribing you any medications. Is that clear? Yes, sir. So what I try to do with people, um, I started streaming to have conversations with people just to understand a little bit about what their life is like. Um, that's basically it. Sometimes we'll talk about stuff, which is totally cool. Like sometimes we can talk about particular topics that may be interesting to you or interesting to me. But generally speaking, we're here because I believe that the internet is a judgmental space yeah. and that having a conversation with a human being can help us learn more about each other and learn more about ourselves. Sometimes, and I'm happy to go into more of my background if you want, um, people have questions about something related to science, health, or mental health. And while I don't provide medical advice, like, for example, I think you have Crohn's disease and you should start on a biologic agent. I won't do that. I'm happy to guide people based on my varied experience and the kind of work that I've done if people are interested in learning about things. And that's reciprocal. So if you want to teach me about stuff, too, and it's kind of where the conversation goes, like, that's totally fine. Okay, cool. How does that sound? Yeah, it sounds great, man. It sounds great. Um... Everything you're saying is, it's, it's perfect. It's music to my ears. You know what I'm saying? Awesome, dude. So can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Yeah, my name is Aiden. I, uh, a lot of people that don't know me, they call me Aiden Ross. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, that is my name, but I like to just be called Aiden. Um, I'm a streamer. I've been streaming for a few years now. I've been streaming for, I would say, honestly, four years. Coming up on five. You know what I'm saying? Um, let's see. I... I enjoy streaming. I, I used to enjoy it way more when my hunger was, was more, you know what I'm saying? Was when I was more hungry, but now okay. I feel like I've really kind of not beat the streaming game, but kind of like accomplished what I, my goals that I set beforehand. So now it's harder for me to kind of make and appreciate streaming more sometimes. Um, but lately I've been doing some new stuff. Like I've been switching it up and I've actually been enjoying it lately as of like this month particularly. So, you know, it's been really good. Okay. Um, can you tell me a little bit about why, how'd you become a streamer, man? So I've always kind of like played video games and throughout my whole life, like everyone I used to like kind of be buddies with back in the day when I used to play like games, like I used to play my first game I ever streamed was NBA 2K14, but I had like no viewers, but I just streamed it because, which is like when I was 13 years old, I would just stream it because like I was 13, like literally just cursing and just playing and stuff like that. And just kind of like making content. And my boy was like, you'd actually be like a really good streamer. And I would like see other streamers that I would I would watch and I'd be like, all right, you know, I'm, I'm gonna get ahead of the game. And I did it and I just, I have ADHD, man. I just move a lot, I speak a lot. I just, my mind is just not normal, I feel like sometimes. And uh, I don't know, I just I just really, really like got into it from having like passion for, for NBA 2K and then just talking a lot and while I'm playing and stuff and entertaining. Okay, so it's, it sounds like you liked NBA 2K a lot. You, so you started streaming when you were like 13? Yeah, but I got no viewers and I quit for like a three, four years. And then I started up, up again like when I was like 17, 18-ish. And what, um, so if you've been streaming for four or five years, that means you're like 22, 23? I'm 22. Yeah, I'm about to be 23 okay. in October. Okay. Um, and so what, second time around, what kind of got you into it? Second time around, I, I, I was a senior in high school and I like knew that like, 
I didn't want to go to college, man. Like I had, I had family members like tell me like, you're going to be homeless. You're going to be like, if you don't go to college, like you don't go, become a lawyer and you, like, they want to become like a lawyer or like something that like, something that was like suit and tie, super professional, classy. And I just knew it wasn't for me. Like I, I was just always different. I was always like super to myself in school. I just never really wanted to do what everyone wanted me to do. I always wanted to go like around the, like I always wanted to do the opposite. Like if you, like if, if a human being in my life that wasn't my father, my mother told me to do something, I just wanted to do the opposite of it. Just to be like, haha. Hmm. Like I, 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 you told me that shit and I, and I did the opposite just cause I could do it. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So it, it sounds like, um, you, you really like had a lot of, it sounds like family members were almost like trying to scare you into going to college. Uh, I got a lot of pressure because I, I, I came from, I come from a fan from a family that nobody ever went to school. Like the only people that have been through, through I have sisters. The only person that uh, was in school or my, was like my one aunt and then uh, my mom, like my dad didn't even go to college. Like, it's like nobody in my, my whole family went to, went to, went to college, like nobody. So they if they never me. went to college, why would they pressure you so much into going to college? Because at, at the point of my life, when I was a senior about to like make what I wanted to do, we weren't really financially stable. There was a lot of problems in my home. So like, they were just like, well, if you go to college, you'll have a good head on your shoulders and stuff. And uh, I think it'll be different because you'll be switching up like the family tradition type of thing, type of thing, you know? Wow. So it sounds yeah. like things were a little bit rough and, and they sounds like they, they were recommending stuff based on what they thought was good my, for you. My senior year, it was really hard for my family. I was, I was super skinny. I didn't eat every night. People think that like I, I had it very easy my whole life. We were financially stable, medium class. Up until about senior year, it got really hard for us. Um, and, you know, it's, I, I would go literally some nights without eating dinner. Like I would just have like a bag of chips for dinner and stuff. And, and why is that? Because there was a point in time where something happened where everyone in, like, in my family, my mom didn't work. She, was, she, was, she does yoga and stuff. Like she's like an instructor now. She does like yoga for fun. Wow. I, I retired my mom like a couple years ago. Um, but she just does yoga and instruct me for fun. I'm but, sorry, what does that mean? You retired your mom a couple of years ago? Like she would work with like mentally disabled people and like help them out. Like people with like autism and like down syndrome and bipolar, she would like help them and stuff. And like basically be, like, wow. not a nurse, but kind of just like somebody who would just like be really like, like an aide basically. Yeah. So I retired my mom from doing that. And, um, she just does yoga for fun because it's like, she's like very into namaste, like peaceful stuff and stuff. So she's super at peace and spiritual. Um, but what I mean by retiring her is I just basically like, was like, Hey mom, dad, you guys never have to worry about money ever again. Like you guys are good. I got them a house. I paid it off everything. Got them cars. So that's how, that's wow. what I meant by retiring. Yeah. That's impressive, man. Yeah. That's the best feeling I've ever, out of everything I've ever done in my career, out of anything I've ever spent, that's the best thing I think anyone could ever say, especially me. Like that, I, like any anybody that's in a position like I am, I, I pray that you guys all get in this position where you can retire your parents. It's the best thing in the world. There's nothing, nothing like it. Sounds like you're a good son, Aiden. I try to be. I try to be. <laughs> um, maybe if we if we get to know each other a little bit better, we can hear about some of your less good things that you do for as being a son. But yeah. Um. So, wow. So, so that sounds like you're, you were kind of very self-driven. Can you help me understand a little bit about this kind of like, if someone tells you that you shouldn't do something, you kind of like, you're like, screw you. I'm going to do it anyway. Well, my mind has always been different. Like I, I'm telling you, when I was like four years old, five years old, I've always grew up different. When I was five or six in first grade, I was wearing pull-ups still. I was wearing diapers because I was, a, I was a late bloomer to where I was peeing and wetting the bed until I was like six or seven years old. And I've always seemed to be rebellious and I've always seemed to be doing things that like it late and just what other kids weren't doing. I would have weird tics growing up. I was just super like, I wouldn't say I was like socially awkward. I was very social. I made a lot of friends. I moved around a lot. I moved, I've had like four different, I moved to like four different towns, kind of three different towns like making new friends. I've always been very social. I've always fit in with people and stuff. I've never had a hard time doing that, but I would just say growing up, listening to people, I was very, I just, I was, I guess you could say rebellious in a way, not in a bad way, just in a way if somebody was like, hey, Aiden, do that and this, I would do it my own way. Like, if I, I like to just figure it out on my own. Like, for example, 
I had to learn this a lot, but I've had many things in my life where I've messed up, where people are like, Aiden, like, don't do this. Like, Aiden, don't jump on the table, for example. But I would have to do it to learn the consequence. I would just like to see what would happen. I would, I would want to see it. People in life that can catch it, and like if, like for example, doctor, if you were like, Aiden, if you jump on that table, you're going to get hurt. They, I think those people that can actually just listen and just not do it, those are lucky people. There's a lot of people that are that 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 genuinely like they have to actually go through it, figure it out for themselves. And I was one of those kids that just like wanted to just know what it was like. So I'm sort of hearing that not necessarily that you were like rebellious, but that you just needed to learn things from yourselves for yourself. Yeah, but again, like I just think it's not fair. I get it. I get why, but I just think it's not fair for family members, anybody to be pressuring their children to be doing something. Like I think college is, is extremely outdated. For example, I'm not bashing college. I think college is necessary for a lot of people. I think if you know what you want to do, if I am, if I know I want what I'm passionate about, if I want to be a lawyer, a doctor, if I if I want to do something, I think college is worth it for me if I know what I'm doing. If I think if people are going into college without any train of thought of what they want to do, like any like if for example, if I'm like I want a career in business, go to college or business. If you if you don't know what it is yet. Just go to college or business if you know you want to major in business. But if you don't know what you want to do, what's the point? That's my opinion. I'd recommend try finding a way to make money, stack up, you know what I mean, and, and, and figure it out then. I just think being pressured and forced into doing that, and that's what I had my senior year. Like I was already being told by my family members, you need to be an accountant. You know what I mean? You need to be an accountant. You need to be a lawyer. You know what I mean? And I'm like, I don't even know what I want to do. It's my life, you know? And I'm at an age where I just want to know. I, I'm at an age where I just want to. I want to figure it out my own. When I was 18, I just wanted to figure it out my own. Yeah. And, and so what's it like to be under that pressure? Um, I think I felt a lot of pressure because at this point, my sisters weren't really doing anything. No offense to them. I love them. I, they're, doing, they're doing their own things now. But I just think I, I was really going through it because I feel like everything was crumbling in my family. Nobody was really, you know what I'm saying, doing anything. That's scary, man. Yeah. And I just felt like I was in a way, the golden child, I had to resurrect and help my, my, my parents out and find a way. So I, I just, yeah. So I, I'm almost hearing that like the pressure you were under was not just about your own life. It's sort of like they were putting all their eggs in your basket. Yeah, I would say so. I would say like, I, I was kind of like, I felt pressure from everybody because I, ha I had to, I had to succeed. And if I didn't succeed, then I was going to feel like a failure probably. Like, I, I don't know. And honestly, I still have this pressure to this day. I know we're going to get into that later, but the pressure, it's never went away. I've had it ever since I was a senior. Really. What do you mean we're going to get into that later? Help me understand that. Well, we're starting, you're, 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 we're talking right now about like before all this, which is good. And I want to, I want to stand this for a little bit. If you have any more topics or questions to talk about, because I'm saying I still have this pressure to this day. Okay. Of, of like basically like carrying my family tree, if that makes sense. It's weird. I'll get into it. I don't mean it in any type of like egotistical way or anything like that, but. No, I'm not, I'm not getting any ego from you. Okay, just making sure. Um, you want to talk about it now? No, I'm, I'm saying like, was there not, because I know we're talking about like the beginning, like before all this, like, it, do you want to skip right into that? I don't care. I don't care what we do. But I mean, I have a, I have like a thousand questions for you, but sure, maybe we can get into a little bit later. Okay. Um, so you mentioned that you were hungry. So you, you said that you said a couple times that your mind has always been different. Like what else have you noticed? Every single trauma I've ever had in my life, I've always put it away and stored it and I never dealt with it. Like I would, I, I've only cried a few times in my life. I've cried before and, and sometimes it hits me, but like I used to cry a lot when I was a kid, but like every time I have trauma, I put it in my back of my brain. I'm very desensitized. My brain is very desensitized. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I almost, it's just like, how do I put this? My brain works really weird. Like I don't feel feeling sometimes because I'm, I'm not soulless. I have a soul. And whenever I like disconnect myself, I feel things and I, and I, and I can feel love and I can feel passion. I can feel stuff, but sometimes whenever you disconnect yourself, you, you feel things disconnect from the internet mainly like go, go, go basically I, like go somewhere. You know what okay. I'm saying? Yeah. Um, get away from all of this. Get away from everything. Take a little break, go travel somewhere without having to work. Take time off of streaming. It really helps me find myself again, connect myself okay. to reality. Um, but um, where, where was I? Sorry. Oh, the desensitization of my brain. That's my biggest issue I have today. It's like, it's super hard for me 
to sometimes feel things and 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 and, and just kind of like um I don't know. It's almost like I'm emotionless and like I feel like I beat the game. What what do you mean by beat the game? Like what's the game? <laughs> when I was when I was coming in to like you know, entering the streaming game, I had goals in the back of my head. And the goals in the back of my head were set your parents up for life, put some money in your bank account, meet some of your heroes and idols, and you did it. And the excitement and hunger I had when conquering this, like the grind part, the grind aspect, was honestly, I couldn't realize it, but when I was grinding, that was the that was like the, the peak feeling of me when I was accomplishing all this stuff. I've talked to a lot of the people that I've looked up to throughout my life and I've met them and I've had conversations with them and I got this and I got that and I did that and I did this and I just feel like I've kind of already conquered a lot of the things like at, at a really young age. Sure. And what does it feel like to conquer things at a young age? Like I beat the game. And how does that feel? I don't know. I, I, I honestly, man, it's really, it's fucked up because honestly, like, that's what drives me crazy sometimes. It's like, what do I, what, what do I, what, what do I do now? Like, what, 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 what do I do? You know what I mean? Sure. And I'm hearing that you really almost enjoy grinding. I, of course, when I was in the grind and I had a hunger and I was boom, bam, boom, getting all my, my goals and results and stuff. It's like, that shit was everything to me. Like, that was like, that was you could see the hunger. The hunger right now that I had when I, I'm sorry, I'll never have that hunger again. It's true. I don't, I, well, I don't believe That's I scary. will. Well, I, don't, I think, I don't believe I will. I, ho I wish, I wish, I, I wish I would, but I just, I don't think that hunger exists anymore. Like I'm, I'm hungry in other ways. Like now, sometimes when I, when I, when I, when I want, when I want to make like amazing content, like I want to, I want to do new things. I just think about my community and what got me here today. Like my community has been here through the shitty moments, the good moments, the good content, the bad content. It's like, now all I care about is just doing shit for them, my core. I don't care about anything else but my core. I wanna make good content for my core because my core has been here through everything for me. So, so it sounds like you had some goals that were, and you know, let me know if this word rubs you the wrong way, a little bit more selfish before. Definitely, no, 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 no. My, my main set goal was to just get rich, take care of my family and have some money to put aside for me and that was it. I would, yeah, so. I, I would say my goal was never selfish. Like once, once I, I my, my first, my first purchase was a Lamborghini at 19, I think. But like, you're right. I guess you are right. My first, my first goal, what, yeah, I would say it was selfish. In the beginning. Yeah. And I, I mean, I, I, I was thinking about a better word, uh, you know, because I, I think it's like, okay to have selfish goals. Like, you know, like it's okay to want stuff from life. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, 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 di I didn't mean it to be derogatory. And that's why I was like, I, no, couldn't, I just couldn't find a better word. I think, um, I think, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah, no, go for it. I think when you're in grind mode, like anyone that's grinding towards something, like I don't really know too much about you, but like when you're grinding for like, let's just say what you, what, you went to Harvard, right? Sure. When you were grinding to get to Harvard, when I was grinding to become a streamer, you kind of have to be selfish because like, let's just say like, like in a way, in, in a way, like you're grinding to like, to you have in a selfish way, like where you have to just do you basically before you can really aid and take care of others you know what i'm saying like you kind of have yeah to i I, th I think that's a very very reasonable way to look at things um interestingly enough i would say in my case it was sort of the opposite there was a time in my life where i was grinding to get into harvard and i was nowhere near and then there was a time in my life where i gave that up and wasn't interested in being the best or accomplishing anything really um and paradoxically that's what ended up getting me there. But, you know, I, I think that what you're saying makes perfect sense. Um, and, and so I'm kind of curious, like when you were grinding and accomplishing stuff, when you got, it sounds like you got a Lamborghini at the age of 19, which is like, that's rare, man. One, it's like below one, it's like what, like point something percent of just doing that. There's people that don't even have fucking houses and food, bro. And I'm over here buying a Lamborghini at 19 years old. You go know what I'm saying? Like, it's like super desensitizing. What's, what's desensitizing about it? I think in general, at 
at 19 having a load of money and not knowing what to do with it, never being taught what to do with money, never being taught how to use it, how to utilize it. And I'm 19, I buy a Lamborghini. It's like, it doesn't make sense. I don't even have a house yet. I don't even have, my parents aren't even good yet. I just think it's super desensitizing making money to buy a, a Lamborghini at 19. I just think having a lot of money with not knowing what to do with it at 19 is crazy. You know what I mean? So I, I think there's something really, that sounds like an important discovery, but I don't understand it. So how does buying a Lamborghini at 19, how does that connect to desensitizing? Can you help me understand that? Um, I think you're on to something. I just don't. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think what I'm trying to say is like, maybe it's the wrong word I'm using. Like, I, I don't think so, man. Well, what? it's desensitizing buying a Lamborghini at 19 in general because it's like, you're not, I don't know, I just feel like, not every 19 year old's doing that. You go know what I'm sure. saying? So when you come into that, like that, that little, like, I don't know, like when you come in and you go buy a Lamborghini at 19 without having houses and all these things and stuff, it's like, I never knew how to manage money. Like I never knew how to like do that. And if I, and right now, if I go back at 19, I had the funds I had, I would tell myself, don't buy a Lamborghini right now. And then what would you have done if you told yourself? If Aiden Ross from the future showed up to 19-year-old Aiden Ross and was like, bruh, don't buy Lambo, what, what, what would 19-year-old Aiden Ross have done? I think what I think I would have literally said, give it to your parents because they know what to, they know what to do. You the, know what I mean? I, that's I, what the older you would have said. What would the younger you have done? Oh, you're saying younger than, younger than now? No, no, no. So like if you were 19, right, let's say you could travel back in time. Okay. And you could talk to your 19 year old self and 22 year old Aiden was like, don't buy a Lambo, give it to your parents. What would 19 year old you have done? Fuck you. I'm buying a Lamborghini. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And, and so when you say desensitize, maybe I can offer something and let me know. So I, I'm getting the sense that you, when you're grinding, you feel really good, right? Cause you're putting in effort and then you're seeing those numbers or whatever those metrics are. And then after you get it, there's like, you feel nothing? Not nothing. So I'll explain it. When you're gaining, when you're grinding towards something, you get a high. After I would do a viral stream or a viral moment, I would get high off of it. It would give me, it would give me some type of like release of chemicals in my brain to make me like, okay, keep going. This is amazing. I love, I love the attention, the, 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 what I'm gaining from this. I love the money. I love the, the dopamine release. I love it. I want more of it. I want to keep, what's next? How do I go viral again? How do I do it again? How do I go again? How do I gain more followers? How do I get more? How do I gain out of this? The clout, it's an addiction. It's, it's, it's addicting. It's a drug. Because when you're gaining, when you keep gaining and gaining and gaining, you, it's, it, it's, it's a high, you know? So I wouldn't say I feel nothing now. I just don't care anymore. Like I don't care as much as I did before. Like if I was stuck on a very, very small core community that just loves me and cares for me and, and will watch me do anything, and, it, and I don't really care about the crazy numbers anymore. I don't really care about doing crazy viral stuff anymore. Like, I just don't. Like, I, I care to go, I care to make good content, but like the crazy, crazy viral moments and stuff that I was doing back in the day, I don't want to put my, I don't need to put myself in that position anymore. What's changed? I would say growing up a little more, um, going through a lot, doing a lot. I would say um, having more money now. Um, I would just say, honestly, yeah, I would just say more experience in this shit as well. And in what ways have you grown up, Aiden? Experience. I think, um, I'm not hundred percent mature yet. I'm not, I still have a lot to learn. I'm still super young and I make dumb decisions all the time. Um, I, I don't know, man. I, I think... I think I still got a lot more growing up to do, but I think I'm in a better place uh, now than I was when I was back at 21, 20, you know? How were you different one or two years ago? What was the place you were in? Less money, uh, different, different living situation. Um, you know, I would say less, I f like, like just less experience in general in my, in my career as well. Um, so, different, different people around me got, you know, I don't really speak with anymore. Go ahead. What were you going to say? I'm sorry. 
So no, no, it's, it's totally cool, dude. I, um, I was just kind of so I'm a little bit confused because, like, on the one hand, I'm sort of hearing that back in the day, when your head was in the game, you felt good. You're grinding. You're getting that dopamine rush. You use the word addiction, which is, I mean, that's that's a powerful word, man. And at the same time, it sounds like you felt really good. Definitely. And, and I'm sort of almost hearing you kind of say that you're in a better place now, but you like don't feel as good in some way. Like, does that you kind of make sense? I'm sort, sort of hearing. I don't. Threat. I don't feel more. I don't feel fulfillment and high anymore after having a viral moment. Does that make sense? Like if I see a viral, sure. if I see a viral moment or viral clip now, I'll just laugh about it and scroll right past it. I don't care anymore as I would care back in 2021. I would be super, super like, oh my God, oh my God, I got to do more of this. I got to do that. I got to do this. I, I just don't really care for it anymore. Which one do you prefer? The way you are now or the way you used to be? Now, nah, all about pleasing a core that cares about me than a trendy audience that doesn't really care two shits about, give two shits about me for sure. Okay. And is being fulfilled and, and being high the same thing? What do you mean? So you said like, you don't get the sense of fulfillment. You don't feel as high anymore. I, I don't mean like drugs. I mean like what you're talking about. I feel at, I feel at peace. I feel I'm cool with what I have. I, I feel comfortable. I feel good. You feel at peace now? At peace because back, in, back when I was in that 2021 mode, I was nervous and, ho and horribly going like mentally destroyed. Cause I would always have to think about what I got to do the next day to go viral. Otherwise I'm going to fall off. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I was, I was on a mission still trying to grind and trying to figure things out and, and try to just going down this little upscale of a blow up, you know? So I'm, I'm kind of hearing that like, it's quite a roller coaster, dude. So oh, like yeah. on the one hand, there's like the thrills and it's like, hell yeah, you feel that energy. What's next baby. But at the same time, maybe there's like anxiety. Like maybe I can't do it. Like, yeah. You know, doubt. Literally, yes. Self doubt, self um just a lot of a lot of like like overthinking, man. Just like straight up just you know. What kind of what do you mean by overthinking? I just what thought if I didn't, if I didn't top this stream, I was going to fall off and everyone would leave me. And I just thought like if I didn't do this right or or you know, if I didn't you know figure out a way to do this stream better and figured out then I, my whole community was going to leave me. I, I really did. I thought, I thought everyone would leave. And what, what, so you mentioned that like your, who you hang out with or something has changed. What, what's happened to well, your I was community, a, your connections? I had a different living arrangement, you know, back when my name in 2021, I was first blowing up. A lot of people would hit me up. I had a lot of fake people um, in my life at that time. I had a lot of people who were, were just straight up, um, just not, I had a lot of people in my life that weren't there. Like my living arrangement was there. I was in a whole content house, okay? I was in a house full of people um, who do content creation as well on the internet. And um, it was just, it was a different environment. I was living in work, if that makes sense. Like I was living, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I would wake up to a messy ass room to a stream I did the day before. And I would, you know what I'm saying? Like I would wake up to that. Like if I like was in my streaming room the other day and I, and I completely broke like um, this one stream I did, I, I broke like this con concrete stuff with a hammer. Um, and and it, I, I slept in that, like I was sleeping in work. So my living arrangement in general was just completely diff. Like it was just, I was living in work. I felt too much work, 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 you know? And and how are you living now? Happier for sure. I, I, now, um, I now don't live in work. If I want to take a day off and lay in bed, and watch TV and, and just take one thing at a time and not live and work and go outside. And it's, 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 it's a lot better. I do. What's it like? Yeah. I do. I do. I do sometimes get lonely though. I'm not gonna lie, but uh, what you writing down there, doctor? I mean, I've written a ton of shit. Why are you so focused on what I'm writing now? I'm just kidding. I'm just, I know. I, I know you've been writing. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think you're kidding. <laughs> well, no, no I'm, I'm saying like, I know you've been writing this whole time. Like, I, I don't really care what you've been writing. I mean, I know you're just taking notes. Is there something about... Can I ask you a question? Mm-hmm. Um, and I know I've been asking you. It's kind of silly. So what I'm signaling to you is I, I think... Uh, what, what was it like to say you get lonely sometimes? I've always lived 
with work. So I've always had people around. And now that I live alone, it's different because now I live alone. I don't live with family. I don't live with parents. I used to have a girlfriend, like a girlfriend, excuse me. I used to live with her. I don't live with her. Obviously, we broke up. I don't, I live alone, right? So it's like, for me, it's like, it's different. You know, I'm, I get lonely sometimes. Sounds lonely. Yeah, it is. But I have friends and I have, you know, my parents close by and stuff. So it is what it is. Can I think for a second? Think. Is he diagnosing me, chat? What's he doing? I'm going to need a second, okay? <laughs> Take your time. Is it okay to be lonely? Yes, it is. I used to think it wasn't, but it is. Help me understand that. It's okay to be lonely. It's okay to not have to rely on somebody for happiness. It's, it's okay to find yourself, um, find happiness within yourself. Like you don't need to be, you don't need to be always with somebody. You're allowed to be lonely and find happiness and sleep alone and, you know, you're allowed to do that stuff. I think, I think, I think doing that sometimes can be good for people. I think, I think people need to find themselves by being alone, you know? Okay. Um, I'm going to just share a couple thoughts. Let me know, like, it's kind of like a shot in the dark. Like normally I talk to people a little bit more, but y you let me know what, what sits with you and what doesn't. So the first thing is you kind of mentioned, you know, early on that you sort of feel numb. Um, and or desensitized, I think was the word that you used. And and I just heard I was because you see, you know, I, I don't get that from you. So you seem pretty animated. You seem actually pretty in touch with your feelings. Like you had a really like poetic description of of you know the grind and how it's like addictive and it makes you feel good, but it like comes at a cost, right? Like there are the high highs and there are the low lows. Yes. And the scary thing about the grind is even when you're flying at the top. In the back of your mind, there's like, okay, is this plane going to crash? And, and then it can feel really good to like have those thoughts and beat them back with like something growing bigger and getting more viral. And like, you know, so it's, it's almost like you're conquering your demons because you have all these doubts and stuff. And like, you're going higher and you're going higher and you're going higher. And as you, as you put it, you beat the game. And, and then, I, you know, I, I saw a couple things from you that I, I just haven't seen before, except when you mentioned the loneliness. So like the first thing is you called attention to me writing, which, which I know, I mean, you know, I've been writing the whole time and like, I know I've been writing the whole time, but there seemed to be something like what I actually felt in that moment is like a little bit of a, like a little bit of a sensitivity, like, like, you know, like, what are you writing? Like, there's like, like, what, what, what did I just show you that you fucking caught is like, honestly, what it felt like to me. Um, and then you also said like, it is, and then I asked you like, Hey, like, is it okay to be lonely? And you kind of said, yeah. Right. Which I, I think you're a smart guy. And I, I think that you use your mind to deal with a lot of your thoughts stuff. I don't know how else to put it. And then you, you gave like a really positive answer, right? Like it's okay to be lonely. It's okay to like feel these things. And then you kind of said it is what it is, which is something that people say when something is not good. Well, you know, like, well, there's perks, there's pros and cons with everything. Right. Um, I think there's times where I'm like, damn, I wish I had somebody with me. I wish I can enjoy life with somebody. I wish I can, you know what I'm saying? I think, I think, you know, there's, there's, there's pros and cons out of everything. I think, um, you know, when, when, when you saw me, I knew you were writing this entire time. When you saw me talk to the loneliness part, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, look, man, I'm, I'm going to be honest. Like, it's good to be lonely, but there's times where I also wish I wasn't lonely. Of course, I'll, I'll admit it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I, I mean, so that too it's it's kind of like there's pros and cons right so like 
I'm, I'm with you. There's pros and cons to being lonely. There's pros and cons to being married. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I'm, I'm with you. I, I think intellectually it's spot on. But, but I'm, I'm kind of noticing that like anytime you kind of come up on emotion, your mind kind of steps in and, and sort of says like, oh, there are pros and cons, right? It's okay to kind of feel this way. But something interesting happens is that you actually move away from the feeling by saying that. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. I, 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 like I said, my emotions are fucked. Like, I feel like I don't feel sometimes. I try to step away. I try to move away. I try to get away from the feeling part of things sometimes. Yeah. And, and w- why do you think your emotions are fucked? Throughout my whole life, I've always had trauma and I've always not really, like, went through it. I've always kind of just, like, put it, aside, put it to the side. Um, do you feel comfortable sharing? I mean, I don't think this is the place to really air out all your traumas, but can you help you. me understand? Huh? Yeah, yeah. So the most traumatic thing that ever happened to me was, check this out, right? This is a uh, story uh, when I was 12. I was sleeping. My, uh, my uncle came in. He stabbed me with a knife in my sleep. You can see the mark right there. It's a scar for life. And he thought I worked for the FBI. He was on some meth. And Holy then, shit, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was 12 years old and um, in my sleep. And I woke up to a knife and I pulled it out and I went to the hospital. Yep. How, how does it feel to say that? I'm just, I don't care. I make, they make jokes about it with me. They've actually helped me out a lot. You know. Who's they? My stream. My chat, my audience, like they, my viewers. How do they, Be- what, what joke? I'm confused. Well, they just make me, like I think sometimes humor fills voids in a way. Like sick, dark, twisted jokes. Sure. You know what I mean? Like I think my, my audience, my viewers sometimes help me like, they make jokes about it. So it's like it, it makes it like a little bit, they try to add light to the darkness of it, you know? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that that sounds, I mean, humor is a way that human beings cope with stuff all the time. Yeah. I, I, and I mean, so even though that was kind of physically traumatic, did it, how did you understand that? At did it age, bother you? At a young age, I didn't. At a young age, I didn't. And my parents told me, they said, you don't have to go to school for however long you want. We're going to put you in therapy. We're going to do all these things and all that. And I said, nah, I want to go to school. It was, it happened on a Friday. I said, I want a uh, Friday Friday uh, night after school, I said, nah, I'm going to school Monday. They got me a cast, I went to school. I made up a lie to everybody in my class. I said that I tripped on a rusty, like a rusty nail. I was, I forgot what I said. And um, I ran with it. Are you, I mean, that's impressive. Yeah. Like, that's a hard 12 year old dude. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah, 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 and I think, um, I left out something as well. I, 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 I also witnessed my grandparents having sex at eight years old as well. Not wit- and, well, kind of witness in a way, shadows and noises and stuff. Well, so, so it's kind of interesting because, you know, you call that trauma and like, it's definitely trauma. Yeah, yeah, for sure it is. For sure it is. Uh, and, that, and yet, like, what I'm actually getting the most of you from, or what I'm feeling the most of from you is actually like pride. Not pride. I just try to bring it pride. I try to bring light to it. It is dark. Don't get me wrong, doctor. It is mm-hmm. dark. It's fucked up. I just try to bring light to the situation. Like I think adding a piece and a scent of dark humor to stuff is, in my opinion, the best way to kind of put light over it. Like it's like I I, I just like – that's how I guess I, I've been dealing with it. I've always just cracked dark, crazy dark jokes. Absolutely, man. I mean, I, I think um, literally like um, we can talk about this if you if you want to at some point. But I'd love to. I, yeah. I literally earlier today. Let's see if I can find this. Uh, My grandparents passed away now, Chaz. So please don't make any jokes. Thank you. Uh, no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm actually reading a bunch of papers about coping mechanisms and trauma. Yeah. And just how they, they kind of change and stuff. But it, it's kind of interesting. So I'm, I'm noticing that. You bring a lot of positive to the negative. Yeah, and that's what I try to do, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
I look at it like this and people always sometimes are like, damn, I wish when I was growing up, I didn't have it like that. And I wish sometimes like it would be easier and stuff. And I don't want to sound ignorant. There's definitely people that have had it way worse than me, but I've been through some stuff. You know what I mean? Not, probably there's people that are, that are to see, hear this, that have been through way, way worse than me, you, etc. Right. So I don't want to sound ignorant, but I think that you got to take, sometimes take the cards you're dealt with and just try your hardest in life and give it all you got. And I think part of that is finding a way to literally kind of make your mind strong. So I think when you go through these traumatic things in, in, in life, you want to try to add some type of like light to it. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm, I'm hearing that. Yeah, I, I hear you, dude. So like what I'm getting from you is that you've ha you're, you're a survivor. You're a thriver despite your circumstances. Yeah, yeah, I, I would believe so. Yeah, I mean, I, I think there's plenty of evidence for that. Yeah. So what bothers you about... So, so when you kind of say, like, you know, you didn't feel much when you were traumatized, like, help me understand that a little bit. I just... So when I was, when I was a kid, I just never liked talking about my feelings. I always just kept it in. Like, I... I even though I would, something bad have ha would happen to me, I would always just find a way to just kind of like change topic and just not want to talk about it and just not want to let it out and just really just keep it in and put it in the back of my head and deal and think about it later. You know what I mean? What, what kind of stuff would you keep in? Anything in general. You know what I'm saying? Going up um, just with any type of trauma, any type of like my, whether it be my parents fighting or, you know, whether it just be my grandparents having sex in front of me or whether it be, you know, getting stabbed in the knife in my sleep, whatever it was. Any type of trauma like that, I would just always try to not really talk about it, put it in the back of my head and forget about it. Well, I mean, it sounds like you're actually doing something similar even today. It sounds like you learned a different way of doing that, which is looking at the positive, trying to put light on it, cracking jokes. Yeah. But I, I'm hearing that maybe at one point you were like avoiding it or, or whatever, and now you've learned a different way to like move away from it. Yeah, definitely. So let me ask you, what's what's the problem with like, not feeling a whole lot scary it's scary because like i'm wondering one day is this gonna catch up to me am i am i gonna one day one day wake up alone at 40 years old and not have any feeling at all any type of any type of like i don't know any type of like ambition any type of like feeling and admiration um if i said that right sorry um if i any type of love, any type of just happiness in general. Like, am I going to be this empty, um, have like this void? Like, am I going to, I don't know. I'm scared. What, 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 what am I going to feel in the next 10 years? What do you think you're going to feel in the next 10 years? I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully good. I mean, has, has your fear of this grown or shrunk over the last four years? Of what? Being scared about my future? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would just say living in the moment more. And I think just not really trying to think about it because I'm scared. I just, listen, I, I think nobody wants to be alone when they're older, bro. You, you have, are you married? Yeah. Like, that's your person. You know what I mean? Like, that's your best friend. That's your companion. That's like your rock. So, like, you're good, right? How old are you, if you don't want me asking? 40. You're good, brother. You're good. I'm worried at 40 years old. I'm not going to be able to find someone genuine enough to love me for me. I, I, I wear that stuff sometimes, man. I, I worry, you know, um, I just worry about that. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a super legit worry, dude. Like, I think uh, <laughs> um, you said earlier that you're known on the internet as Aiden Ross. Yeah. But you are Aiden. And I absolutely, like, there's a decent chance you'll end up with a string of people who are not interested in Aiden, but are interested in Aiden Ross. 99% of people. That's right. It's fucking scary, man. It sounds like the odds are stacked against you. Yeah, but I signed myself up for it, man. And I used to feel bad about it. And I used to hate, hate it in a way. But it's like, I'm blessed at the end of the day, man. Like, I've done there, a lot. You're doing it again. What are you doing? What am I doing? Oh, adding positive to the negative. Yeah. Damn, I, I, damn, that's crazy. You're right. I did, I did just do that. Right? So, so the, the interesting thing is like, like I'm with you, man. Yeah. But like, I'm going to say something. 
please. I'm really curious, and, and you gotta, can you do me a solid? Can I ask you for something? Go ahead. I just want you to tell me what your response is. Good, bad, whatever. Okay. Aiden, how would you feel if I said, I'm sad for you? Right now, you just said, Aiden, I'm sad for you. Yeah. I, would, I would ask, well, I'd be like, why are you sad for me? Because I, I mean, you just told me that there's a 99% chance that people are going to be with you for the wrong reason. You just, you're worried about being lonely. My initial, I think that, my initial response was like, yeah, man, it sucks, but what could I do? The truth, I mean, like, what could I do about it? You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, I, 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 it, would, it would be like, yeah, it does suck, but I mean, like, what can I do about it? For real. It is what it is. It is what it is. That's the type of vibe, literally, yeah. But then, but then, but then when I'm, but then when I'm alone in my bed, I'm gonna cry tonight. And I'm gonna be like, damn, doctor was right. I'm like, damn. You know? I can't tell if that's a joke or not. Um, I get my feelings sometimes, man. It depends. Like, it depends on the type of day I'm having. And what kind of day you're having today? Good day. <laughs> Does that make it more or less likely that you'll cry at night? I, well, I was adding a little bit of a joke to that, to that, to that statement. I don't, I will, I'll never cry at night alone. You know what I mean? Like I, I just sometimes get my thoughts, it's sad thoughts that come in and it's just more thoughts that are just like, think about my future. It happens every so often, but it just depends on the type of day I'm having. That's all. Okay. Any, how's this going? I like this. What do you like about it? I like having an actual conversation with somebody that's a good conversation, uh, a serious conversation. I don't get a lot of these unless it's with my parents or close friends. And I think meeting is like, you're a stranger to me. I'm a stranger to you. I think meeting a stranger and having like an intellectual conversation like this is, it's, it's nice. I like it. It's something different that I usually don't do. Well, no wonder you're lonely. Damn. I mean, I try. I'll tell no, you what, I mean, I'll tell you. I know, I know, I know. How, but how, I, what did you hear there? I was like, damn, like, what, what, damn dog. Like, why'd you say it like that? Help me understand how what you heard me say. <laughs> I said, I said it's like it's rare for me to have intellectual conversations with strangers. You said, right? That's wonder why you're lonely. I yeah, mean, I mean, mean, I mean, yeah, you're right. Like, but it's hard to have intellectual conversations with strangers that want to leech off me and use me for things. It's hard to see the real in people, you know. So yeah. That, yeah. So like, I wasn't. It wasn't like it wasn't a dig at you. I know. Like, no, I know you're good. I know. Right, because like, I, dude, it's like it's hard. Like, like you don't even get to have regular conversations with people, bro. Yeah. So like in person, when somebody recognizes me, they'll come up to me and ask for a picture. They won't even want to have a conversation with me. It's the same script every time. Hey, Aiden, can I get a picture? They walk away. It's no, how's your day going? It's no, I'm good, man. What do you do? What's your name? It's no, hey, man. Um, what you? I try. I try to conversate sometimes. I do, but it's, it's like I would love to have a conversation with people who know me. I'd love to get to know them as well, you know? Yeah. I'm hearing, Aiden, that you sometimes get treated almost like an object. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, all I'm, and, and let me, like, by the way, you, you got to tell me if I overstep or something, okay? Um, but, like, I, and I'm just saying, like, y you know, if you just think about it for a second, and anyone who gets treated like an object gets treated like Aiden Ross instead of Aiden, like, like they're going to be lonely. My point, my man. It's very. It's gonna be very hard for me to find the one. I'm not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I'm a little bit more optimistic. I, I, I you think, think I will. Uh, you think I will? I, I think so. Thank you, man. I, I think you absolutely can. So, can I tell you why? Tell me why. Um, I think you're good at growing. Like, I, I think you're good at growing. Like, like you put your mind to something and you work on it. Like, you're a resilient guy. Uh, I, I think you had to learn certain ways to survive. And you paid the price for that in a weird way. So, like, the weird thing is if you look at our brain, like, our brain can't selectively suppress emotions. 
So what it learns how to do is shut them, like you can turn down the volume, but it's not like you can just turn down the volume on some instruments. There's a song playing. You either turn down the volume or you turn it up. And what I'm hearing from you is that you turn down the volume a lot. And over time, you've actually learned healthier ways to turn down the volume. Mm. And so what you used to do is like, I'm not quite, quite sure what, not really. I mean, we can, if you want to, at the end, I can pull out an iPad and walk you through like, you know, almost like lecture style, like what traumatic coping mechanisms look like in the evolution of coping mechanisms and stuff. But, and then now I'm hearing like a lot of, you know, something that is on the ver so a lot of humor, but also like a lot of like fatalistic acceptance and almost like resignation. Yeah. So is, right? that, a good, is that a good or bad thing? It's neither. It's a strategy. So I think that on the one hand, if you don't like, cause here's the thing. If you were alone at the age of 40, how would you feel about that? If I was alone at the age of 40, I don't, but I don't know, doctor. I don't know how my brain's going to be. I don't know. You know what I mean? Let, I'm, let, I, me, let, let me toss something out. You see if, if it sits with you, okay? Okay. I think you would be like kind of okay with it because you knew that this would happen, right? You always knew that the deck was stacked against you. 99% of people are going to see Aiden Ross and not Aiden. Like you saw it coming. Like you fucking see it coming. Even sure. today. Yeah. And so, like, you're not going to be surprised. Yeah, but doctor, who wants to be 40 and alone, bro? I mean, I, I think no one. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I'm hearing... What, what, are you, what, where is, what are you feeling when you say that? Who wants to be 40 years old and alone? You know, it's just like when, you, when I think about it, it's like, damn, like, it's a realization. It's like, who actually wants to be 40 years old and alone, waking up alone? I could have a billion dollars in my bank account, doctor. I still would not want to be 40 and alone. I'd rather have less than a billion. You would trade that much money for what? A real one. A best friend, a companion. What's it like to want that? I just think like right now it's like I'm chilling. But I just think like later on it's going to be harder. I think it hurts. Right now? Nah. Because I'm so distracted. Right now, there's so much going on. I'm like distracted. I'm doing a lot. When I'm not streaming, yeah. I'm, I'm still, you know what I'm saying? I'm doing something. Yeah, but so, so when you say it's going to be hard, like, what does that mean? I think I, it. I think when I'm like 30, most of my friends are going to be married with kids and they're going to be doing their own vives and they're not really going to have time to be kicking on me anymore. And I don't know what I'm going to be doing with this stuff anymore. Hopefully, I'm still doing it. Who knows? But if I'm. Sitting there, I got nothing going on, no career at that point. I, I don't want to think that far, like as far as like career wise, but I mean, like I, I, I like to think because I, I don't know this game. I don't know, I don't know what I'm, I don't know what I'm doing, but I just wanna, I want to figure out. I, I'm hey, sorry. It's okay, it's okay to be scared, dude. Yeah, I think that's what makes me human. Yeah, and I, I think when you don't let yourself be scared, that's what makes you not human. Yeah, that's what makes you a robot. True. Right. And, and I, I think that there's like, I, I mean, by the way, am I like beating you up here? You're not. You're making me think, okay. actually. I like thinking. OK. How do you feel about feeling? I love feeling. I love feeling feelings. Are you feeling feelings now? I am feeling feelings with you. I am. What are you feeling? I'm feeling very curious. I'm feeling very like open minded. I'm feeling very um interested in this conversation for real i really am I, I like it a lot okay okay so let me toss some stuff at you okay we okay. doing all right can i can i keep going i love it yeah of course bro. Okay. of course um i mean so, so here's here's kind of like I, I think it's like it so so it, it's really interesting because i think you intellectually understand what you feel I think you just won't let yourself feel it, right? So like you recognize you're, you're scared, you recognize you're lonely, 
you know, you use these words that are like emotionally bland. So you say it's going to be hard. Yeah. But like, and I, I get that and you're right. It's a hundred percent accurate, but it's also like you're turning off the color on the TV. True. Right? Like, like, okay, doctor, can I, can I tell you something? Yeah. Like, have you, okay. Have you ever, obviously I'm not trying to bring this up. If you're like, if you don't want to talk about it, that's fine. I completely understand. When you, before your wife, like you were with many women, right? That you probably had no connection with. Sure. What I'm trying to get at is like when you when I if you get with a lot of girls, there's no connection or anything. It's called like in my generation, I don't know what it's called in your boomer generation. For me, it's called fucking hoes. It gets old. Like nobody wants to keep fucking hoes. I don't want to be 30, 40 years old fucking bitches. I want to be 40 years old with a wife and kids. That's the goal, correct? Right? Like that like that's like the fulfillment. But I think like when you're when you're when you're if you if you do that for your whole life, I feel like it's depressing and there's a void and you're not fulfilling anything it's just like you're fucking a bunch of hoes so you realize that you're the hoe like you're the one that's doing that shit these that's how it is now my generation is fucked up doctor you know how bad like these girls doctor are so fucked bro it's bad it's very bad it's been very hard or as it is being me and on top of that it's gonna be hard in general because these girls nowadays doctor they're fucking it's bad bro i might just go gay fuck it it's a joke. I, I that was a joke. I, I, that was a joke. I'm sorry. I, I'm late talking. Sure, sure. sure. All right, so let me, <laughs> let me tell you what I heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think there was a really important communication in there. I just don't know if my boomer ass can decipher it. Yeah, yeah let's bring so it Help down. me out, bro. Okay. So, so what I'm hearing is that like there's a certain amount of pleasure in sexual activity. Yes, there but is. there's a lack of fulfillment. Of course. After I nut, I want the bitch to not talk. Doing. I'm not sorry. I'm just. Sorry, I want I want the girl, the female, the queen, to not speak to me, look at me, leave. Yes. Why? That's unfulfillment sex. It doesn't make sense. Why am I having unfulfillment sex? I'd rather. But, but wh- wh- why do you want those things? Why don't you want them to talk to you afterward? There's no point. What? But so this is what I'm confused about. So you're engaging in this behavior, and there's some rules to the behavior, and then you feel unfulfilled, and then as you, g- <laughs> in your words, Hayden. <laughs> You become the hoe. So, like, yes. I, I think somewhere somewhere in there, like, you end up in a, like, I don't know what that means. Like, okay. But I, I don't think it's good. It's not It's not good. That's why I stopped fucking getting with girls for no reason. Like, I stopped doing that. Like, right. I, I, right. Yeah, yeah. I, it, there's no point. Like, it's, so, it's definitely not good. It's post-nut clarity. You know what that is, obviously, right? Sure. After I nut, like, in the moment, I'm like, yeah, I like you. You're so cool. what are you looking for before? To get my nut off. Okay, but like, and then how do you, but post nut, you're telling me post nut clarity is unfulfilling and makes you feel like a hoe? Yeah, but in the moment, Doc, it feels good. I mean, like, you know what I mean? Well, yeah, yeah, but I mean, so, so sure, so like, sex is fun. I'm with you. Okay. <laughs> but like, like, what I'm kind of pointing out is like, you're engaging in behavior that makes you feel cheap. Yes. That makes you feel unfulfilled. Yes, yes, correct. That's why I'm telling you, like, I don't see the point. It gets old. Like, I feel like when you, when you, when you get with girls for an unfulfillment, post not clarity, it's pointless. It gets, it gets old after a while. You know what I mean? Yes. So maybe this is a whole conversation for a different day. I'm just going to toss this out there. There is a connection between the way you treat yourself and the way that you treat other people. 100%. Right? Yeah. So I, you hearing what I'm saying? No. Can you break it down, please? Yeah, sure. So, like, I hear you use a particular kind of language and also engage in a particular kind of relationship with people that you're sexually active with. Yeah, because, doctor, there's a difference between a girl, like a, a genuine, like, okay, girls are girls. But, doctor, there's a difference between a girl and a, and a, and a hoe. Like, like, it's different. It's different. Like, a queen and a hoe, it's two different girls. Like, I'm trying to tell you, like, I want to find a queen. Fuck the hoes. The hoes got it. They can, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's no, like, I, I what? don't. My bad. <laughs> I, I, I gotta just, I gotta start. What's the difference? Doctor, you're not going to marry a hoe. You're going to marry a queen. What's the difference? A hoe is a girl that if I literally DM right now, um, she'll, she'll, she'll literally come over first night, give it up. Like, I don't got to take her out. I don't got to conversate with her. It's just like. You know what I'm trying to say? So. That is a hoe. I don't want to wife that. 
You wouldn't want to either. You wouldn't, trust me. <laughs> you wouldn't, because you would not. Bro, They're soulless. You, you, you know nothing about my relationship, right? Well, no, I'm just assuming nobody wants the wife a hoe, Doc. So here's, here's what I'm hearing, to be honest. Aiden, I think, I think a lot of it's in your head. Like, so I've seen relationships where that start off with sexual promiscuity yeah. that end up in, that are happily married. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've seen relationships that they wait until marriage that end up in divorce. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, no, you're not wrong. That's why like 70% of, there's like, isn't the divorce rate like higher than it's ever been right now? I don't know. I don't, it's, it, it's been a while, it's been high for a while. Yeah. It's about 50%. Like sub 50. It's crazy. And, and you know, people that aren't even divorced, they probably, some of them, not all of them, I'm not going to assume, but most of them, they're unhappy and they want to get divorced, but they won't because of financial support, because they have kids, etc. So like a lot of people are unhappy in their marriages that are still actively in their marriages, you know? So. Sure. I, I mean, I, I think, I think we're, th this is getting to, cause I, I think the, a lot of this has to do with the way that you perceive these people. So like, I know this sounds kind of weird, but like, it sounds like your your determination of whether someone is worthy or not worthy of marriage has to do with their behavior. That's what I'm hearing. A hundred percent. Definitely. Right. So, so I know it sounds kind of weird, but like whether someone is worthy or not may have to do with your attitude too. A hundred percent. But you have to understand, like, you're not wrong what you just said. That's why I stopped doing it. Like if a girl, if I DM a girl, what are you doing tonight? Come over or whatever. She comes over and like I put on a movie, I know what's about to happen. It's like, I don't have, like it's like, it's, it doesn't feel like, it's like, how do I put this? After I'm done with what I wanna do, I want her out. It's not about me being a bad person. Like I'm not a bad person for that. I promise you, I'm not. No, I mean, I, th I think I think if like people are if it's consensual and people are not interested in romantic attachments and like two people want to get together and have sex, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. There's right not. as long as you're not disrespectful and I it's would, consensual. I would I would say there's not, but like I actually I agree with you on that. There's like nothing wrong with you know what I mean. Like two people coming together and do what they want to do and, and part of ways, hundred percent. But like I'm a sapiosexual. You know what that is. Attracted to intelligence? No, I mean demisexual. Like I like, I, I'm attracted to like someone that like I have feelings for. I can only, now I'm at the point in my life where I can only have sexual stuff with somebody I actually like, like I have feelings for. I can't, I can't do stuff with girls I have no. Sure. Yeah. So, so let's, but like what determines whether you have feelings for someone? If I like them and they like me and we compensate and I feel good energy and I feel really good around them and they feel really good about around me. Okay. So I'm going to toss something out there. Sure. Can Wait. I think for a second? Yeah, doctor, let me pee real quick. Is that okay? Absolutely, man. Chat, what the fuck? Chat, he's a boomer, so he doesn't understand, but fucking hoes. Y'all don't talk about chat. Y'all are not liking hoes. Correct, chat? Go, 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 go. This may take longer than two hours. <laughs> oh. He's a, he's a, he's a, Honest guy, you gotta give him that. He's very authentic. Tries. You got a lot of genuineness. Very genuine. Okay. You doing good? Yeah, I'm all right. How you doing? Okay. I didn't good. wash my hands. So, whatever, man. It's your place. You live alone. <laughs> cool. Um, so, okay. How, how, how confident are you 
in the stuff that you're explaining to me, that there's like two ki- kinds of women in this world. Pretty confident. <laughs> okay. And help me understand where that confidence comes from. Uh, being with hoes and being with queens. There's two differences. Okay. So what's it, what is it, what does it feel like to be with one versus the other? A hoe you want to have sex with and then you want her to get out. The queen you could have sex with. It's, I call it making love. Okay. Cause you're, you guys both like each other. It's different. It's, it's more, it's better. It feels better. You know what I'm saying? And then, and then after, after you're done with the, the with the queen sex, you guys cuddle, you, you rub each other, you watch, t- you watch TV, you watch more TV. So, so, so I know it sounds kind of weird, Aiden, but what I'm hearing is that the difference isn't in the person. The difference is in your reaction to the person. Yeah, definitely. Right. So, so I know it sounds kind of weird, but if, if the difference is in you. Eh, not necessarily. Okay. So check this out, right? Let me, let, let me give you an example. Let's say there's a girl named Tasha. Tasha, hold on one second. Sorry, here's something. Tasha fucks Larry, and then she fucks Joseph, and then she fucks Aiden, back to back to back nights. That is a hoe. Okay, what, 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 what is that, what are you saying? I'm trying to break it down, like that's, that's, that's like a hoe, that's, that's, you know what I'm saying? So. A queen, it's, it's, yeah, it's about my def- defining of the behavior of these women, but a queen is someone who, how do I say this? It's like in their own, like they're, they're, okay, hold Aiden, on. forget about everything you're explaining for a second. Okay. And listen to you. Okay. So when I ask you, what's the difference? You say that the way that, that you feel with them is different. Yes. Right? Like that's it, because with both of them, you know, there's intercourse. But in one case, it's yes. fucking, and in one case, making it's love. making love. That's correct. What's the difference, Aiden, between fucking and making love? Making love is better. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Fine, one is better. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I entirely agree with you there, but. You have a wife, you know what I mean? Like, so you know what it's like, like you do know what it's like though. Okay, the conversation for a different day. But what, what, I'm, what, what else is different? When you're in love with somebody and you make love to them, it's way better than fucking a sure, hoe. Sure, and it's then, better, but what makes it better? Because when you fuck the hoe, you, not, you, don't want, you don't want nothing to do with them anymore. You don't, wanna, you don't want any, you don't want to talk, look. You want them out of your room. Okay, so let me explain. Let, let me just point out. But Am I wrong, the difference Jack? is in you. It's not in the person. It's, You're it's, saying it's the you don't want to. It's the emotional it's the connection. connection or lack. Okay, so the difference between fucking and making love is your emotional connection to the person. Yeah. Okay. So the first thing is like, that's not their behavior. Now we're going to get to behavior in a second. That's okay. coming from you. Well, yeah, technically, yes. Okay, so I don't know if I'm going to get banned for using this word ho, but so I'm not going to use that word. You could use also, it. I consider it disrespectful, but that's fine. I mean, you use the whatever language you want to. So let me ask you this. Is it possible to fall in love with someone with whom you have, you start off by having meaningless sex? Yes, it is. Okay. Right. So then, then like love is not determined by them. It's still something within you. Correct. But falling in love with a hoe is a no-no. Okay. Why? It's bad. They got hoe tendencies. They're going to end up fucking you over. They're going to end up divorcing you once, they get, once a baby pops out and they're going to get some child support money. It's a no-no. How do you know what they're going to do? <laughs> I mean, Doc, I'm just like, they have tendencies, brother. They, 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 they fuck to get to the top. They fuck to, for money. They fuck to, to, to for, where, they, they where are you getting this? That's what hoes do. My generation, it's different, brother. You're 40, I'm 20, I'm, it's split in half. I'm telling you, my generation is bad, bro. You should see what these women do. It's very fucked up. No, I, I, I'm asking, so just please think about the question for a second. Where are you getting your information? My experience. Your personal experience. Yes, and, and, and my, my, my peers, my other people in my space, my basically like work buddies, um, um, 
I would say other. So pe- this is what I, I'm not. I'm not. Deni- I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just genuinely trying to understand, right? Because I I know it sounds kind of weird, but like I know your regeneration really well. Oh, you do know my generation? Hundred percent, man. It's bad. So you can admit it's bad, right? I think there are parts that are bad for sure. My, my generation but, is full of a bunch of TikTok, low attention span, brain kid children, and 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 and, and um, like literally, I said children, but obviously, like the twenties, like eighteen, nineteen year olds. That's what I meant by that. Like it's 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 very bad. I ha- I'm a TikTok brain myself, doctor. So, Aiden, this may sound weird. Like, and we, I'm not right here, okay? Yeah. Your generation is full of human beings trying to make it in this world, just like every generation before. The world has changed. Outbreak. Yes. Right. I'm with you. But like, I still think it's like, you know, this is the kind of thing where I wonder a little bit about like, when you engage in a transactional relationship with someone from the get go, and you treat them transactionally, I think it's reasonable that you're going to get that in return. Right. Right. And and so like, when when you say like, these people are going to behave like this, like, I I know it sounds kind of silly. But I'm really not trying to be a dick here. You understand that people's behavior is not solely based on them. It also is influenced by you. So a girl acting and behaving like a hoe is influenced by me? 100%. Right? So, like, I'm a human being and you're a human being. Right. If I came to you and I said, Aiden, you fuck nut. You don't know what you're talking about. You're all fucked up in the head. I am going to, I've gone to Harvard Medical School. I am doctor. I am psychiatrist. Aiden, you don't know what you are doing. Leon! You need to get married. I will find you wife. We'll go find you nice girl. She will be good. <laughs> She'll be good girl. Not these people you are dating on the Tinder and the Bumble and the Hinge and all of this. <laughs> like you, will, you need to settle down now. Oh, this Wait is now. not fair. Come on, bro. This is great. This is great. <laughs> this is right? Great. So like... If I approached you like that, how would you respond? Laugh. <laughs> like, laugh. Okay, it's, right? It's so funny, so yes. the way I interact with you is going to determine how you interact with me. That's correct. I actually get what you're saying. Thank you for that, putting it like that. I Thank you. Right? So, so like, my point here is that, I, I mean, I, I don't know what I, I'm even talking about here or where this is going, but, like, I don't doubt that your experience is the way that it is, but my point is that, like, you know, so I, I work with patients who are narcissists. I think, I, am, I, am, they, I, am I a narcissist by the way you're speaking with me or no? I don't know. It's too early to tell yet? Definitely too early to tell. So, so like, from a diagnostic perspective, the, the diagnosis of narcissistic personality disorder requires, like, a very long history of, like, understanding a lot more stuff. I think the other thing that's complicated is that content creators, by definition, become more narcissistic because that's the only way you can survive content creation. Thank you for actually saying that. You're not wrong. I've changed. I think I am. I I definitely give up narcissistic tendencies. You're you're actually 100% with Craig what you just said. When you're a content creator and you've been in it for a long time, like it's like you look at view count, your money, all these things. There's so many. Yeah, yeah. Views and... so, so I, I, I'm not going to label you a narcissist or not. And if there's narcissistic behavior here, I think it's like defensive in nature is my gut check for most content creators. Okay. So what do you diagnose so me as? Is there anything you can diagnose me as? I like would as? not diagnose you with shit, bro. Really? Yeah. Well, uh, like literally I wouldn't diagnose you with anything because that's, this is not medical care. And if you oh. want to understand the process of diagnosis, sorry to disappoint. No, don't worry. You're fucked up in some way. I just won't say it for really. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, what no. the fuck? No, Aiden, so seriously what it is is that the, the questions that determine a diagnosis are very different from what we're doing. Wait, doctor, can you, can you, diet, can you prescribe me lean? What is lean? A four. A, what? A four. What, I don't understand the question. Cough syrup, promethazine coating. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no. Um, but let, let, can, can I go back to this thing about yeah, yeah, the way bad. we relate to, so, so like your behavior influences someone else's behavior, I agree right? With you and on their that, yes. behavior influences your behavior. Mm-hmm. And, and so I, I think that like what I'm worried about is, is that, so you don't want to end up alone. So like, 
I, I don't want you to end up alone, Aiden. I want you to be happy. You seem like a good dude. You seem like a dude who's just doing your fucking best. Thank and you, you, you do some things really well. And, and somewhere along the way, you've conceived of a worldview, which I don't think is the best. What do you mean? I'll get to that in a second. So, because I'm trying to, I'm challenging your beliefs, right? Yeah. I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, I, 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 I agree with the part where you're doing the best. I just, I didn't know what you meant by the other part. Yeah, I'm, get, I'm getting to that. Okay. So, like, like, first thing to understand is that your relationships with women are not, like, it's not like there's two camps of women. Yeah, there is. And... <laughs> there is, though, doctor. Like, okay, so I, you, get, you can, I get it. It's you my can, influence. You can split. Yeah. You, 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 can, you can choose to judge people that way. Yes. Uh, but like, that's me being, being ignorant then if you want to say that. But yes, I, I will. Yeah, yeah you can choose to judge yes, people that way. I'm, I'm telling you, like, scientifically, it's just not. It, oh, yeah. It's not like there's two kinds of like. So human beings are complex creatures. Yeah. So like you're not you're not a dick or a hoe or anything like that. You're, you're just a human being who has gone through life. And your brain has wired, your psychology has wired so that you have a constellation of stuff. Like you're a complex guy. Yes. Right. There are times where you feel like a hoe because you had a lot of meaningless sex. And there are times where you feel in love. And there are times where the scariest thing of all, you fall in love with someone who you judge as being not a queen. Yes. You're right. And you're right. That's you're scary. And, and then what happens is you, your mind does the same shit it does with all these other emotions where it's like, would you let yourself fall in love with someone who's not a queen? Fuck no. Absolutely, right? So in comes the humor, <laughs> in comes the suppression, yes. in comes the I never feel anything, yes. in comes the like all that other shit because somewhere along the way, so then you won't let yourself love. And then from the outside- not, That's not true though, doctor. Listen, because it's not, it's not because doctor- Nobody wants to marry a hoe. Well, not nobody. I'm speaking. You're right. I'm ignorantly speaking from my, based on my perspective. I don't want, I don't want to marry a hoe. Let, let me finish. I'm just talking hypothetically here. Okay. okay? All right. Well, yeah, so yeah. My point is like, if we put ourselves in the shoes of the women that you interact with, right? they can label you as one of two things, right? I don't even know what the fuck they are, but forget about it. They can judge you. Oh, this guy's an asshole or this guy's a prince, whatever. Right. Yeah. And, and there are certainly people that are going to do that. My point is that you are a complex human being that has a lot of shit going on. Definitely. And, and that your interactions with women may be easily judged as this guy texted me and now he's whatever. He's a player, like whatever. He's an asshole, whatever. He's toxic, whatever. They can label you with that shit. But my point is that there's a whole complicated, like, internal, like, stuff going on you're like a whole universe in there man yeah no nah, you're not wrong um i'll give you an example right doctor i want to ask you a question okay and you be honest and everyone can answer this the honest way possible would you rather you're already married so just pretend you're not married pretend you're an 18 year old doctor okay well what were you doing when you were 18 mostly playing video games what game mm -hmm. Uh, maybe Diablo, uh, Starcraft. Okay. You're 18 years old playing Starcraft. Right? Yeah. There's a girl on Instagram at the time. Let's just say there's Instagram. There's a girl on Instagram who's got hella followers, shows her ass off all over Instagram, all this stuff, her tits, everything, right? You invite her over. She comes over, doc. Right away. You, you, you text her, hey, what are you doing tonight? Want to pull up? She's like, sure. Let's watch a movie tonight. The new, the new uh, 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 Stranger Things came out. Season. Let's watch it tonight. She pulls up. You put it on for five minutes. She starts rubbing your dick. You start kissing. You fuck her. Okay. You want her to leave her right away because come on, look how easy that was. You want you want a challenge. You don't you don't want that. Listen to this. You go to Europe for vacation. You meet a girl. You meet a girl over in Europe. She's maybe had one or two guys. She, she's fully clothed. It doesn't really matter about the clothing part, but she just has, she's has, she has an intellectual conversation with you about stuff. You guys go on a couple dates. You really are starting to like this girl. She's starting to like you as well. Does it matter? I'm saying, sorry, which one would you rather go with? Go with for what? 
<laughs> like, which one would you rather marry? I'm sorry. I don't think that the variables that you described would be very important for. I, I completely said that wrong. I'm sorry. Like, I should have explained it and got it out better. I'm I so, mean, but you got to get what I'm saying. You got what I'm trying to say. So, so, so yeah. I, I here's what I hear you say. You're trying to put it, put me in a hypothetical example. Yeah. In which you paint someone who's like got this extreme, and then you paint someone who's got this extreme. Yeah. And you're kind of pointing out to me, hey, fuck nuts. It's not that complicated. Yeah. There's two types of women in this world. Which one would you rather marry, bro? Yeah. And then, and then if I say I would ma rather marry this one, right? Let's say I, I'd rather marry the European. Then how would you feel? Like, good shit, doctor. You're smart. And if I said the other one? Doctor, no, brother. That's, not the, that's the one you don't want to marry. Go marry the other girl. She's better for Why? you, bro. All right. Doctor. I got you. Let me let me let me let me let me bring it down one more. I feel this, this Instagram girl, she has two baby daddies, two different guys. She has uh, uh, five hundred bodies, and um, she. Uh, I told you she's like half naked on Instagram. Okay. Right. This this other girl, the European girl, no social media. You know what I'm saying? Um, she has two bodies, and. She just, you guys hit it off intellectually. Like you guys are like, it just feels so good. It feels like you guys are connected. Who would okay. you marry? So chat, answer chat. Let's assume, let, let's say that I marry the European. Yes. I'd rather marry the European, right? But, but I think there's a big difference because you're presupposing that one of them has an emotional connection. Yes. The real question is if you, oh, so like, because you're saying that the emotional connection. So what are you, what are you hearing me say, Aiden? I, I know what you're. I, I'm, I know. I'm happy. I'm happy to say what. I, like you can construct the scenario in whatever way. Like you get that you can construct the scenario in whatever way. If one of them has a year to live, has cancer, has HIV, has all this shit, and and this the other thing is what you. It's it's subtle, right? Because you're doing something really interesting. You're adding promiscuity to a set of other negative traits. Sorry, what's promiscuity? I'm sorry. I'm just not really uh, having sex with a lot of people. Right. You're not saying the, the scenario you're giving me is rigged. Right. Because it's not like you meet this person. She's only been uh, she's she's intellectual. She's beautiful. She's amazing. She's a saint. She's awesome. She's European because apparently that has some extra appeal. And she slept with 500 dudes. Right. Yeah. Like so like you're, you're sort of creating this scenario where like there's promiscuity on one side or like having sex with a lot of dudes. But there's also a shitload of other things. And then. If I keep on saying no, what are you going to keep doing? You're going to keep on adding other shit. If I was your until boy, you get a yes. If, if I was your boy, okay. You, I'm, you just I'm gotta, talking about the scenario. I know you just, gotta, the you, you just got to get it. You're, you're you're actually politically correct the way you're wording things. You're right. Technically, there's so many different breakdowns you can give me and stuff. You're you're not wrong. What I'm trying to say is, bro, if I have a boy who is dating a hoe, if everyone, you guys want. If you have a boy who is with a hoe, with a girl who is just wrong to him, to all these things, like, is just... What do you mean by wrong to him? Just, uh, sorry, not wrong to him specifically. Just wrong, like, a, a girl that has her morals all fucked up, right? And nobody's perfect, by the way. I'm just saying, like, it's, as my boy, if my boy was in that situation, I'd be like, yo, bro, no. No, 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 Get another one. That ain't it. Okay, so let me ask you something. Yeah. Do you think people who are very sexually active can end up in happy, fulfilled marriages? Yes, there's these things called hoe phases in my generation. Everyone goes through a hoe phase, Doc. Okay. I, I went through a hoe phase. I don't want to go through a hoe phase anymore. Now, I'm allowed to go through a hoe phase, but if a bitch goes through a hoe phase, fuck no. Send her ass to the curb. <laughs> that was a I, joke. Is that a joke? Yes. Okay, yes. 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 Joke. Yes. Okay. Yes. It's a joke. So, obviously. so, so women, everyone's allowed to go through a hoe phase. I, I, okay, can I be honest with you? A girl's allowed to go through a whole phase if she's upfront honest about it. I think, not a girl in general, I think everyone is. If you're upfront honest about your whole past, you tell them like everything what you've done and you're very direct and you don't find anything out like that's hidden and stuff, I'm okay with that. I think when you're older, people realize that like it's cool. Like it's not cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I, think, I think honesty and transparency and authenticity are important parts of a relationship. I think so too. But right, a, lot so of, a, lot of, a lot of girls lie about their body counts. A lot of girls lie about their past and stuff. In my generation, I don't know about well, yours. Well, why do you think that is? Insecurity. 
What does that mean? Women, what if, are they insecure? If, if a woman has a lot of bodies, she's known as a hoe in my generation. And whose fault is that? The girl. I don't think so. Right? Because what the girl is trying to do is avoid your judgment. Yeah, but she should be honest. You know, my mom I said agree. You, my mom I, said you shouldn't lie. You lie, you're gonna I don't know what we're talking about. Okay. A Andrew, let me take a step back. Is this is this useful? Do you do you think this is a good conversation? No, why don't we go into something that makes more sense? This is like a stupid topic. What makes this stupid? It just doesn't really it's just like dumb. It's like you 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 and I see different, you know what I mean? Like it's like there's no point to really talk about it. And it's just like I agree. I agree with you that there is less point to talk about this. Yeah. I'm just a little bit curious. What did you hear me say about like this whole like what determines whether someone is a hoe or a queen? Not gonna lie, doctor. I'm not trying to be ignorant, but I think like my perspective and experience on life makes me like I already have this shit like in my head. Like it, it, it is ignorant. It is like super like judgmental and stuff. Like, and I'm admitting that. But like it's it's like I already have like. I already kind of like know like what I want in a woman and I already kind of know what I, well, I told you doc, I mean, I might not even fucking get what I want. Who knows? Yeah. I, so I'm, I'm hearing that you're not open-minded on this topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just think we should move on. It's just like, okay. it's, po it's pointless. It's like, it, it doesn't seem like, it's not that it's pointless. It's just like, it's just like there's a lot more topics we could have that are way more interesting. Okay. What's pointless about this? Because you and I see different. Like I, I we I, see different. Yeah, I think we see different, and I think you're correct with a, with a, with a lot you're saying in, in in the way you're speaking. But like, I have I have a different perspective. I think than you you do. Like, I, I think like my perspective. Like I I've already like experienced what I've experienced. So like, I'm automatically gonna think the way I think. Does that make sense? Like I already have like. Yeah. So so. Uh, so the, uh, we don't have to talk about it more, but I just want to share one last thing with you is like, so I think that's what makes it worth talking about is that you have an automatic perspective. Yeah, definitely. Right? I, I, yeah, 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 and, yeah, for sure. And, and so I think one of the really interesting things is if, uh, like as we go through life, it is very normal for us to form conclusions about how life works, how people work, right? And then the, the interesting thing is that if we stop and re-examine our life, we can come to different conclusions. Yeah, I agree. We're not, we don't have to continue. Okay. The reason I brought some of this stuff up in the first place, I don't even know where this came from. But I know, I know. I, I, I think the one thing that I'm, I'm trying to signal to you is a couple of things. One is that it seems like having sex and making love has more to do with what's in, in the inside of you Definitely. than it does. I agree. With, okay. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that, and I'll tell you why I'm even talking about this now. Cause I, I mean, I, I have a reason why I think this is important is Which that I, why you're saying you're the lip I'm concerned Aiden that. So I want to help you not be alone at the age of 30, let alone 40, whatever. Okay. And the thing is, just based on, once again, my experience, and the whole point of having conversations is that we're going to have different experiences of life. We're going to come to different conclusions, right? right? Totally cool. And then the neat thing is that, <laughs> maybe I'm trying to tell you to get on a chair and you're just saying, fuck you. Uh, oh, sorry. What you were saying, like, don't climb on the table. And you're like, no, I, when someone tells me to climb on the table, I got to climb on the table. So I'm, I'm wondering if that's going on here. But my point is that I, I think, first of all, your the way that you relate to women has more to do with. I, I feel like I'm getting a disconnection. So sometimes when you talk about it, it seems like your interactions with women are determined by them. Like this person is this way because of their behavior. This person is this way because of their behavior. I don't judge. I don't judge anybody based on their past. I come from a fucked up past. I had a whole face myself. I, I'm. I'm just saying, yeah, like, I, like my, I'm just, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, my, I'm not necessarily saying that you, uh, my point is that it's determined out there. Like, women, are, there are two types of women, right? There's hoes and queens, 100%, yes. In my generation, Doc, there's Wh hoes whatever, and whatever. I'm, no, I'm that's not, not what I, I promise and, you, Doc. And my is. point is that, like, you, something within you determines whether you're fucking or making love. Yeah, it's definitely. not just them, right? Yeah. And the reason that's important to me is because you want to end up with someone that you want to make love with. That's correct. Right? And so then the question becomes, if you want to end up with someone that you want to make love with, 
And you can have feelings for... I'm trying to think of a word that's not hope, but I just can't think of anything. Oh. Right, so you, so, and my point is that there could be a group of people like, 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 there could be someone out there that you fall in love with that could be a successful relationship. And I say this as someone who's worked with, just to give you an example, we don't have to get more into this. I don't, I don't need to, I just want you to understand one thing, and you don't have to understand if you disagree, is that you have a contribution. There's something in here that determines the way that you relate to people, women. That's all I want you to take away from this. And if we can agree on that, we can move on. Um, wait, so say, it, say that last part again? Something in here determines your relationship with a woman. That's it. Yes, That's all I'm it's asking. actually right here in my brain. Yes, not my heart, my brain. Nothing in here changes your relationship to women? Oh, my penis! No, no, your heart. I mean, sure, your penis, oh. your brain, your... <laughs> I can't tell if you're joking or you really don't no, think no. that... <laughs> like, bro, I, doctor, I get what you're saying. You're correct. I'm I, like, you, everything you're saying, I get it. I, I, I told you, I'm ignorant based on perspectives in my life. I'm ignorant. You're probably right. There's probably girls out there that have had a whole past that are queens now. Great. But my perspective, my generation, there's some fucked up girls who do fucked up things. And I, and, and I try to not put myself in that position. So sure. Sure. So, yeah. so I, I think that, that like, my point is that the way you all I'm getting, what are you hearing me? What are you hearing me conclude? That it's my heart that basically is the reason why I differentiate women. The, 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 you what? Differ <laughs> Divide women up to queens and o's. No, 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 no. So, so, no, no, no. Actually, <laughs> not exactly. So here's what I'm saying. I, all I want you to just really think about yeah. is that in a relationship with another human b being, yeah. that relationship is not determined by who they are. It's it is determined what I feel. It, they bring a piece of it to the table and you bring a piece of it to the table. Okay, yes. Okay. And now we're going to get to like the stuff that we were talking about earlier, which is like the lack of sensitivity that you have. So you feel numb in some way. Correct. Okay. So it feels weird to go back here. No, so go ahead. I'm cool with this, bro. We can go back to the other topic. Go ahead. Uh, but but so so, I'm just so derailed. Why? Give me a second. Why derailed? There's a whole different energy and dynamic to this con the conversation we just had about relationships to the conversation we were having before. I agree. The energy definitely shifted, Doc. I agree. Right. Right. So it just takes me a second to like move away from that. I was also the language that you used changed the way that I felt in the conversation. Well, yeah, I used ho and I used queen, yes. Yeah, yeah, so I, it's just, it, that affects me. Yeah, 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 I mean, why, why does it affect you? Why does it affect me or how does it affect me? Both, how, why and how does it affect you? Why, did that, why does that trigger The first me? thing is that I feel uncomfortable and defensive being in a conversation where that language is being used. That's just our generation, how we speak. Like, it's like, you, you said it when you first joined, I'm a boomer, I, right? I don't, need, I don't need a reason. I'm just sharing with you why it's hard for me to make the shift. Okay, but I'm just, I, I know, I'm, I'm just trying to leave that out there, that's all. I, yeah, I, that's, it's uh, yeah. like, you know, you use that language and, and whatever. You can call it generational if you want to. Um, I think it is. Yeah. Huh? I, I said, I believe it's generational. Most people that, sure. yeah. Uh, you know, I, and, and so that's just, that, that's just why it's hard for me to shift back into like where we were before. Yeah. I it takes me a second. Yeah, hell yeah. So, you know, cause like here, <laughs> You're schooling me about dating in your generation. And that's a different feel from like, let's talk about sadness, loneliness. I think that they're both actually really productive conversations. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate you for having both of them with me. Like I feel honored to be a part of both of those conversations. Yeah. Also scared to be a part of the last one, but like I can hold two feelings at the same time. Nah, right? don't, don't be scared, man. It's just like, I want, people gotta realize like, there's really modern day pimping going on in the world. Like for example, these guys are now signing OnlyFans girls. You know what I'm saying? And it's like modern day pimping in a way. You know what I'm saying? So it's like- What's wrong with me being scared? I guess you're right. Scared is good, it's a feeling. 
yeah, right? I'm, I can be scared. Yeah, I, I'm just saying but my generation. I, I, it's, I appreciate you looking out for me. So what, what I heard when you said that was that you're like, you're looking out for me. And I like, I felt the love there. That was, that was nice of you. Thank you. I got you. Doctor. Well, yeah. No, you're, you're going to ask. I, want, I actually want to hear what you're going to ask. I, I was going to ask you to remind me of what we were talking about and what feels relevant to you. Um, I forgot what we were talking about before. I think the, the desensitized uh, thing. Yeah. So when we were talking about relationships, how did you feel? It was, it was honestly just interesting. So interesting is, I know it sounds kind of weird, is not really a very good word for a feeling. I'm not trying to be judgmental. No, you're not. It's, it's, I, it's I very basic. I agree. It, right. It right. So, so like, what do you think you were feeling in that conversation? Um, I liked having that conversation because I like, it's like, I enjoyed it because it's, it felt good. Well, not good, but it's just like, I, I, I yeah. knew, well, yeah. I mean, it's just like, I, I know, I know, the difference between, well, my perspective on life, how I feel about certain women. Now that might change when I'm older, doctor. That might change when I'm 25 or 30. You know what I'm saying? As so, of right now, I just know the difference between what I, you know what I'm saying? That so, there, so let, let, can I share with, go ahead, sorry. No, I just, I just know the difference in my generation when between a hoe and a queen. So here's what I felt from you emotionally. Yeah. I felt confidence. I felt certainty. I felt you being on sure footing. Okay. What do you think about that? What's the last word you used? Sure footing, like you're on solid ground. Yeah, yeah, I'm standing on it for sure. Is that how you felt? Yeah. Right, so, so like, I think that there's something very attractive about all of that because it makes you feel good. Oh, thank you. you. Call me attractive. <laughs> I mean, I'm an attractive for you. Okay. Right. So, like, like, do you see how, like, emotionally, there's no numbness when you're talking about that? I do. The numbness isn't in really conversations. I like having conversations. I feel from conversations. Like, the numbness comes from, I guess, daily life outside of conversations. The desensitization comes from that. Okay. So I've detected numbness in you in our conversations, but when we're talking about other things. So okay. for example, when you say it is what it is, I think that's you actually like numbing yourself out a little bit, right? Yeah, because like, what are you going to do about it? What am I going right? to do? It's exactly. Like, like there's no point in having the feeling. Correct. And then the feeling goes away. That's right. Right. So I think there's, there's numbness. And I, like what I'm kind of noticing is that that, that conversation about relationships was like really lively, right? It's like super energetic. I'm feeling uncomfortable. You're feeling on solid footing. And so there was like a little bit of reverse Uno here where here I am talking about sadness and loneliness and I'm like, fucking, I can swim in that shit all day. And it was kind of like a, it was like a reverse of our positions. Suddenly right. you're schooling me. I'm not trying to school you. I'm just want to inform you. I'm going to say this, and I mean this in like the, the kindest, don't take it the wrong way, please. And I'm going to say, like, just listen to what I say. And I got to say it in, in, all right. When I'm, okay. When I was 20, or not even me, I'm not even using me as an example. I don't know who's 20 years old in here. When they, uh, I, don't want, I don't want this to sound ignorant. 20, a 20 year old in my generation is smarter than a 20 year old in your guys' generation. Okay. And I'll explain why. They're more, how do I say it? Enhanced in a way. Like, we got this. My uncle doesn't know how to use a fucking phone. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I don't wanna say this the wrong way. It's gonna sound so dumb. I, I really don't wanna, like, you gotta, you gotta really understand what I'm saying. I'm sometimes really bad at explaining things, but like, a 20 year old in my generation, I feel like, in a way, is more experienced than a 20 year old in your generation. So I think that like, do you, does that make sense? So here's what I'm hearing. So this conversation has the same energy to me as the last conversation that we had, which is sure footing, confidence, 
you really have a clear view of the world and everything makes sense. Yes. So I see a lot of excitement from you, but I, I don't think that this is having this conversation. Uh, like you can school me all. I, I don't mind being schooled by you, by the I'm way. I'm not trying to school you. I'm not trying to school you at all. I'm not trying to do that I, I at think all. I'm, I'm going to stop using that word because that's uh, whatever. You're, my point is that this conversation is going to be the same as before. Where I can ask you about your opinion. It's going to go back and forth. It doesn't even matter but, because but, we're not so going to agree. I, I, the other thing, it's not about not even not agreeing. Uh, whatever. Sure. But I think the other thing is that in these conversations, we're not talking about you anymore. You're talking about society. You're talking about generations. Correct. There's no room in there for your experiences and your personal feelings or mine. Does that make sense? Because we're commenting about that shit over there. I get what you're saying. It doesn't make sense. But... At the same time, it's like I'm, I, I, that's why I kept saying it's my perspective on the other on the, on the other topic. I kept saying like I, I might sound ignorant, it might be ignorant. I'm just saying how I feel based off my experiences. You know what I mean? Sure, sure. So, what would you like to talk about, Aiden? Mm. I don't know. Uh, well, I was doing great this year, lifting weights and losing weight and stuff. And then I went through something traumatic, and then I started sipping lean. You, you started what? Sipping lean, sipping codeine in a uh, promethazine. Promethazine, codeine, and yeah. And and what what makes that? What what feels important about that to you to talk about today? Um, because it's bad. What's bad about it? It's just like. It's a fix that I did when I was going through something traumatic and I was doing super good in the gym and it kind of like ruined a lot of things around me. And uh, it's just like a super, super bad reliant fix. You know what I mean? It's just drugs. It's like liquid heroin. That's what they call it. So it's bad. Mm -hmm. Have you considered seeing a professional about something like that? I don't need to. I haven't done it in a couple months. I stopped. I wasn't highly, highly addicted, but I was, I was on it for a while. Is it okay if I ask you a little bit about seeing professionals, like professional mental health people? Yeah, ask me whatever you want. So it's, I'm hearing that you, it's not a problem anymore, so you don't need to see a professional. Yeah, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think about it, I don't crave it at all, I don't, you know what I mean? Uh, then why talk about it? <laughs> I'm just giving you an update what I did this year. I was in okay. the gym. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, 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 okay. Yeah. so, so just, just kind of like, like this is what you went through. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then I was on this path of kind of like in this, I guess people call it the controversial era where people that really don't know me, that aren't a part of my community, that just don't know me, they would see these articles and things and just assume I was an asshole. Um, I would say things like there are two genders in this world. Um, I made a tweet saying there are two genders. Like, okay. Oh, I went through like this controversial era and that was labeled controversial. So when I made a tweet saying there was two genders, my talent agency dropped me from it. They said... You look what he tweeted this morning. He said something super controversial. And what, what was, what do you understand? Oh, help, tell me about that. What's going on with that? So, I mean, I, I slowed down. I stepped out from making like tweets like that and stuff. But when I, when I tweeted that out, it hurt a lot of people. And I didn't do it to hurt people. I did it because a week before that, Twitter was on my ass about something old. My motive was like, cool, you guys want to target me for this? I'm gonna make a tweet, Twitter, and show you guys that, because they were trying to cancel me for something, cancel on Twitter. So I was like, okay, watch, I'm about to make a controversial tweet, try to cancel me now. And it went, it was my craziest tweet. I think I was like 600,000 likes and like millions and millions of views. And w what, what, what were you kind of, so, so is that kind of the same sort of like thing where it's like if someone tells you don't do something, you're like, fuck you, I'm gonna do it? Not really. I did it because I did a tweet because I knew it would stir. I knew people would like talk about it. I knew it would be controversial in my generation, even though it's not. Um, but I made a tweet because I wanted to show cancel culture. Fuck you, cancel culture. Watch. And I did that tweet and now people still, I think it's like, yeah. It's like people, like it, it didn't matter. Like I didn't get canceled. What, what, what makes you want to do that? I wanted to show people, fuck cancel culture. It doesn't matter. I'm going to tweet out there's two genders. They're going to try to cancel me. I didn't get canceled. I, I understand that you wanted to show people something. What was driving you to 
prove your point. The tweet, when I tweeted it, I knew it was going to stir. So like I, cancel culture is trying to be on my ass. Oh, what drove me to make the tweet was so like a week before cancel culture was on my ass trying to cancel me on Twitter. And I was like, fuck you cancel culture. I'm not going to go for that. So I'm going to tweet out there's two genders and they were even more mad. Okay. So I'll, I'll, th- this is, this is great. Maybe, maybe we've hit our limit for the day, but maybe not. So let me point something out to you. So I'm asking you, you engaged in a behavior, right? You tweeted yeah. something out. Yeah. And I'm asking you, why did you do that? And then the answer that you give me is something else outside of you, right? They were trying to cancel you. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm curious about is stuff in the outside world happens. And then stuff in the outside world enters you. And then something else happens. And then you feel like doing something else. Correct. Right? Like there's, there's a, there's a, stimulus from the outside world and then there's a response from you to the outside world with me yes i'm with you what goes on in the middle like what happens within you when they try to cancel you like does that like that's what i'm asking i'm curious about what how does one action that is done to you result in a response from you why did you do that instead of apologizing or any other of the thousand things that you could have done um, like not treat anything, tweet anything. Ta- I, think, I think maybe just the table thing we talked about. Like I like doing the opposite. I, I, like pe- most people would fold and apologize. I didn't, I didn't care. I got banned from Twitch, that soft, one-sided platform. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, fuck, fuck Twitch, fuck, up, fuck this. And that led to more shit, more stuff. You know what I'm saying? So um, in my opinion, I just think, why would I apologize for saying there's two genders? There are two genders. So it's like, I did it. Yeah, yeah, like I did it. Yeah, so, so, so like when you say, why would you do that? Do you, do you, I feel emotional energy when you make that statement. But why though? I'm saying like, you, you said like, why did you- about the logic. No, no, I'm just trying to ask you like, why, why did you, why, why though? When, I, when you ask like, why didn't you just apologize or do another route? It's because they're like, what, what, what would I be apologizing for? Sure, I, I'm not suggesting that you should apologize. What I'm kind of pointing out is that so th- this is where I think the emotional numbness comes in. So generally speaking, when, when someone says something to me, it affects me in some way. Yeah. And then my drive to act and the way in which I act is shaped by my internal environment. Correct. Right? So if someone says, fuck you, Alok, you're an asshole. And then, I, and then I can feel one of two different things. I can feel ashamed. And if I feel ashamed, I will apologize. Or I can feel angry, I can feel affronted, I can feel territorial. And then if I feel angry, affronted, and territorial, I will turn around and I will say, screw you. Does right. that make sense? It does make sense, so yeah. The behavior, and, and the weird thing is that the mind actually, the logic follows the emotion, not the other way around. I just think, yeah, 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 yeah. I actually agree with that. Right? Yeah. So, so if we're talking about emotional numbness, I mean, I'm just picking this as a random, I don't care what happened on Twitter. Honestly, I don't, Yeah. you know, but I think that like what I'm kind of pointing out to you is that earlier you talked about being addicted to the high of grinding and we're talking a little bit about how you have some of these feelings and you're not quite sure what to do with them. And you, you sort of like, you, you do a good job actually. Right. So you learn how to crack jokes. You yeah. learn how to like accept it is what it is. You can't necessarily change it. There's no kind of no point in worrying, but the worry is still there at the back of your mind. And what I'm pointing out to you is that a lot of your behaviors, even jumping up on the table, I'm not sure how much in control of that you are. What do you mean? So like if someone says, Aiden, don't jump on the table. I don't know that you can control whether you jump on the table or not. No, I, I, I definitely could control a doctor. I think that's like why, like my whole life is like where I am today. I think not listening to what everyone's doing. Have you ever seen the picture of, it's like. But can you listen? To what? To what other people tell you to do? Of course, but like I have to, I have to experience it myself. Like that's just how so I, I. So then I'm hearing that you can't until you experience it. Yeah, I mean, I can listen, but I mean, I'm still going to probably want to do it myself. Yeah. Right? So, so when you want to do most, something. Most people are like that though. Like for example, like when you grow up, when I grew up as a kid, sorry, when I grew up, I'm going to start, I'm going to stop overgeneralizing. When I grew up as a kid, 
I was curious, right? Like I, when I was in high school, I would sneak out and I would go to a party. Like that's just me being curious, even though my dad was like, yo, don't do that. Like you don't have to, you know what I'm saying? Like I just think it's about be, when you're, when you're, when I'm curious, I, I, you want, you want to so know. Let me ask you something. Yeah. Do you control the curiosity or does the curiosity control you? It's a good question. I think the curiosity controls me. What do you think about that? It's not good, Doc, but I mean, a lot of people have that. You know, a lot of, it's like, it's 50-50. I think, I think it's curiosity controls you or you control curiosity. So, so everyone's different. I think, I don't know what, it, I don't know why. I think it's perspective, how you grew up, but it's. I think that, yeah. So, yeah. so if I can share something. Yeah, go ahead. So I want to try to catch a couple things that you say. So other people are like that or generalizations. I'm going to actually move in the opposite direction. I don't care about how, how other people are. I don't give a shit. Okay. What I'm interested in in this conversation is you. Okay. And what your experience is. Okay. So whether other people are whatever, happy, unhappy, good, bad. Whatever. Fuck them. We're just right? talking about you and I. Yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and I think that so, some of what this emotional numbness, I, I think that this is connected. Because generally speaking, we can't control something unless we're aware of it. Yes. Right? So all you have to do is go to the dentist. And if you can't feel your mouth, blah, 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 right? So numbness and lack of awareness leads to a lack of control. Correct. And so what I'm kind of noticing is that you engage in behaviors that feel righteous, right? Like in your mind, they're logical and stuff. I'm not saying they're not logical. I, it's not my place to be the arbiter of logic and determine what is right or wrong. Whether it has to do with relationships, whether it's queens and hoes, like whatever. I'm not the arbiter of truth. What I'm hearing from you, though, is that there is an internal dimension that doesn't get a whole lot of play in the way that you interact with the world, right? These people did this, so I'm gonna do this. This person said, don't do this, so I'm gonna tell them, I'm gonna do the exact opposite. It sounds like some people, that relationships that you feel emotionally connected to, you can actually listen to them. If your dad tells you, hey, Aiden, don't do this. Mom says, don't do this. You can like set that aside. Yeah, I can, right? I can set it aside, but I still kind of, I get curious, you know what I mean? Like it's like, yeah. Still, yeah. Yeah, 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 so, so I mean, I think curiosity is beautiful. But my point is that like, I, I don't, I, the thing that I'm worried the most about is that I, I don't know if you're in control of your life. I think you have a lot of power and I think you've managed to probably control all of these external dimensions. So it sounds like you've got financial security. It sounds like you have freedom. It sounds like you have a lot of stuff out there, but I still get the sense that you are a puppet to yourself. 100%. I agree with you on that. I, I'm a puppet to my, to my career. Literally, I'm a puppet to my chat. I swear to God I am. What do you want to, is that okay? How do you no, feel about it? I don't like it at all. I hate it. But it is what it is, Doc. It is what it is. What'd you just do there? I, I did it. I did it, Doc. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What'd you do? I, I tried to... Uh, Avoiding, I tried like avoiding the, 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 the feeling of it by putting a pot, like a little is, it is what it is on the, on the, yeah. So what, what did you push away? I pushed away the truth. When, what is the truth? That I'm a puppet. How does that feel? It, it sucks. Sucks in what way? It hurts, doc. So uh, let me toss some stuff out. Okay. Uh, all right. What I'm hearing there is powerlessness. It's true. And when I hear you at the age of 40, you don't know if you're going to be alone or not. Powerlessness there too. Well, no. I mean, you're not going to know what you're doing by 45, doctor, to be, fit, to be honest. Nobody, nobody knows what we're, you know what I'm saying? Logically, no one can predict the fucking future. I agree with you, Aiden. What I'm saying, the emotional Emotion energy oh, okay, okay. is powerlessness, right? Because you're like, fuck. 99% of people treat me as Aiden Ross. There's 1%. And let me ask you something. What's more common, Aiden? Queens or hoes? Hoes. And what does that mean for your future? I'm fucked. What is the emotion that goes with I'm fucked? It is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's powerlessness. Yeah. And so here's the crazy thing, okay? Now I'm going to kind of like, I'm going to try to say this, okay? And reject it if you want to reject it. 
So it's my belief that you're like all of these things that you're scared of, you got to stop running away from them. Yeah. Right. So like if you admit to yourself, I am powerless, then you can do something about it. Right. Mm. You got to meet yourself where you're at. Gotcha. Right. Like you, you got to say like when people, you know, the people who get divorced are the ones who don't think that their marriage has a problem. The people who say this marriage is on its last legs, we got to either bust it or try to save it. You have to admit, you, you have to accept the truth of what you feel. Got it. Even though, even though it, if it's the hard truth, you still got to accept it. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. And I see you doing that. I, I don't see you running away from it yeah, in yeah, a way. Yeah. I can accept it. Like if it's in my face and I feel it, I, I'm not scared to accept the truth. I'm really not. Yeah. So I, yeah. I hear you kind of saying it is what it is, but then you're still moving away from it. You're not actually moving towards it. And, and that's where, like, as you start to feel that powerlessness, I think you're going to find, right? And now I'm fucking making a mistake here, but I'm going to, I think you're going to find as you get in touch with your feelings that a lot of this stuff is active when you, because like when you're talking to a girl, I think there's a lot going on inside you. And the thing is, like, if you kind of think about it, like you, you've got, you've got one really good trump card. I could be wrong, right? So you can tell me, hey. This is the generation. You're wrong, Dr. K. You don't know what it's like. So you can tell me I'm wrong. I'm going to admit that. All I want you to do is think and pay attention to yourself. Okay. Because once you start labeling people as this or this, you suddenly become really protected, right? Because the second you label someone a hoe, if you fall in love with her, that love ain't ever going to hurt you. It allows you to push her away. It allows you to like set yourself apart. It allows you to avoid connections and vulnerability. Yes, you're right. And, and so like the, the thing is, and, and so the crazy thing is that if your mind has an ulterior motive to protect you from your emotions, it'll like screw something else up. That's good though. It's just, a de it's defense. You're right. It's defense. Yeah. But the question is who's in control? Are you clear headed or are these things working behind the scenes? Hmm. I mean, it's a good way to put it, I guess. I just think that like, no, I mean, that is, that is really a good way to put it. Cause I don't know if I'm fully in control or not. You're right. Right. And, and so all, all I want for you to do is like, I, I want you to have whatever you want. Thank you, doctor. I appreciate that. I, really? Like, yeah. you know, and, and I think like, dude, you've accomplished so much at the age of 22. And so, like, this is where, like, what you're kind of saying you don't have any passion for what's left because I think you're right. You beat the game. You figured out how to succeed materialistically. Yes. Now what? Now you're where, you know who Gautam Buddha is? Nope. You know who, who, what Buddhism is? That's the guys with the bellies, right? <laughs> yeah, it's the guys with the bellies. So I'm going to tell you a story, okay? Okay. So there was once a prince in India and his name was Gautam Buddha. His name was Gautam. Okay. And Gautam had it all. Yeah. So when he was actually about your age, he was the prince of a powerful kingdom. He was loved. He was respected. He had a queen, like a real queen who had given him a healthy son. So she, okay. And so every, everything in life we had heard, everything in life that he had heard was like, okay, if you're unhappy, the problem is that you're dating hoes, not queens. The problem is if you're unhappy, it means you don't have enough power. If you're unhappy, you need more money. You need more financial security. You need a Lambo. You can't be driving no fucking Toyota. You need a Lambo. All of these things will make you happy. And then that worked for everybody else, right? Because if I'm driving a, driving a Toyota and I don't have a Lambo, I have something to reach towards. I have something that gives me a sense of progress. Goal, a goal, right? yeah. There's some way of keeping score. And That's... that feels really good psychologically to feel like you're making progress. Correct. But then he had everything. And one day he woke up and he was unhappy. And then he's fucked. Because what does he do now? Right? Like, what, how do I find happiness if I have the Lambo, I, I have a queen, I have a child, I'm a prince of a powerful kingdom. I'm like, what everyone else craves in the world is what I already have and I'm still unhappy. Mm. Damn. And so he did something really weird he gave it all up and he's like, I got to figure this shit out. And so then he went to these spiritual teachers and gurus and all this kind of stuff, like looking for answers. 
And then what they basically, what he kind of discovered was that there's a lot of like internal work done. Gotcha. And if you tell me that you've beaten the game, I Mater- think you've beaten the external game. Be- beating the external game, the materialistic aspect of yeah. things, but they're yeah. still emotional right. and there's still like a, there's still like a, yeah. that, that type I, of thing I have to master I, as well. I, I think, I think that's the game that like, and this is what happens is there, there's also this really interesting kind of um, saying, which is that you can't meditate on an empty stomach. And that if you really look it. at it, there's other stories means. I can tell you, but no, I conquering the material. So I, I tried to become a monk when I was 21. Oh, nice. And I went to my teachers and I said, I'm ready to give up my life and become a monk. And I want to devote myself to spirituality in this internal game. Okay. What happened? My teacher said, what do you mean? Give up. You've got fucking nothing. You have nothing to give up. You're a fucking failure at life. Yo. You have nothing worth giving up. So they said, Get your ass back to, and this goes back to Harvard, okay? So now we're going to come full circle. So when I was 18 years old, I decided I was going to be pre-med, and I wanted to go to Harvard Medical School just like all the Indian kids. And I was going to be the smartest fucking doctor, and I was going to have the biggest fucking swinging dick, and I was going to be a Chad and all that kind of stuff. And I ended up failing a bunch of classes because I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Then I go to India, and my teachers tell me, you have nothing worth giving up. Get your ass back to America, Finish your studies and do the best that you can. Finish a doctoral degree. And then at the age of 30, if you want to give all that shit up and you want to take your vows, we'll take you. Mm. And so on that day, Aiden, I was like you. And I said, these fuckers, these fuckers don't think I can do it. I'm going to show them. So I went back. I didn't give a shit about Harvard. I just wanted to be able to give up the biggest thing. Damn, good for you. I put myself fully into my studies like went to med school, I didn't even show up at my award ceremony because it never dawned on my mind that I would get an award for being at the top of one of the classes. I love that, man. That's amazing. And like, they were also smart because they realized like being a monk ain't for me because they're good at that kind of shit. And I think that where you are right now is like, you've got to start this journey. And like, it's the journey to be happy and no amount, I I hate to break it to you, but finding this magical human being out there, it'll bring you happiness of the time, but then you're going to beat that game too. You're still going to wake up. Wow. You're right. Damn. So that, that, I mean, the happiness comes from, so the happiness does come from being alone. Well, no, not being alone, but I would say happiness comes within like you're like, you could be, you could be alone and be happy. Like you could be like, you don't have to be with somebody to rely on happiness or anything like that. You could, you could do it yourself. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and I think that's what you're going to discover. Right. And I think even if you look at your own life, you're going to discover that there are two kinds of happiness that you've experienced. Correct. One is going to be like this dopaminergic happiness, and one is like a quieter kind of thing. Right. And the, this numbness that you've got is like getting in the way of feeling that. Damn. All right, I got to find the spiritualness. I was spiritual at one point. I was, I was very spiritual. I lost it. I got to get it back. I need the light. You find it. Yeah, I, I think you're going to be fine. The one thing I would recommend for you is just catch yourself anytime you say it is what it is. Okay. And whatever you feel, just like let yourself feel it. It doesn't have to have any implication. It doesn't need to be logic out. Just close your eyes and just let it be there without pushing it away, without doing anything with it. Just fucking sit with it. Okay. I'm going to do that, doctor. I mean, like anytime it is what it is, I'm just going to be like, nah, it's not it is what it is. Face it. Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a step in the right direction. But even then, there's a cultivation of emotion there, right? Because you're like, I'm going to conquer it. I, yeah, I can see you're moving around quite a bit. You doing okay? Like, we're, I've, we're done. I've ADHD. Do you want to leave me already? Uh, I thought that I was getting, I'm getting physical signals from you that you've probably hit some kind of limit. <laughs> I just have ADHD, doctor. Let me stand up a little bit. No. I mean, I, I think it's okay to be done. What do you think? Uh, oh, one second, doctor. Um, um, yeah, it is okay. I just I enjoyed it. Um, yeah. So how do you feel when I'm, you're leaving me already, doctor? <laughs> it's a joke. What do you mean? Sure. <laughs> I, I completely agree that you are using humor as a defense mechanism. Bro. Related... No, I mean, I, I mean, like, it doesn't matter if you leave me or not. It's like, whatever, I'll move on to the next thing. Okay. But I mean, like, it's like, I, I meant it as a joke. Yeah, sorry, my bad. Maybe yeah. I'm over-interpreting. Yeah, yeah, yeah right so, there. Yeah, so, yeah. 
I, I, I like to, in terms of uh, stepping away, so Aiden, I find that like two hours is a, like, I feel like we're in a good pausing point. And opening up a new chapter would be a commitment to like another hour or two. Okay, I'm down to do this again. What, um, can you help me understand what your experience of this conversation was? A lot. I think you're actually starting to change my perspective on how I feel. Uh, the, 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 the most important thing I gained out of this whole thing is that it's, it is what it is, is unacceptable. Stop accepting, stop saying it is what it is. And I think it's time to really just, just let it do its thing. It's okay. Yeah. It, it, yeah. And, and, um, what I got from this conversation, first of all, Aiden, I, I think you're just, You're a remarkable human being who's been dealt a really good and really shitty hand at the same time. It's rare to see. Nice. So if we're playing, you know, if we're playing some poker, I got, I got a nice, maybe like a, a two pair, like a, you know what I'm saying? Like a. Yeah, I, I, I think, I think your life defies poker analogies. Like I can't, if I, I was thinking about poker specifically, mm. you know, it's like one of these hands that like is really strong and really weak at the same time. Like gotcha. there's, there's a lot of stuff that. A lot of shit you've been through, man. Yeah. A lot of hurt. And also, like, a lot of exceptionalism. Yeah. A lot of growth. Yeah. And, and I think that I've also learned about what it's like to be a part of your generation. I'm, you're, you know, you're teaching me about what gender dynamics and stuff are like for, for yeah, some like, people. Yeah, like, like, doctor, there's, my generation is so cooked, bro. You can now, like, kids in school, they're learning about, like, they're getting pushed, like, weird agendas and shit. It's, like, fucked up. It's, yeah, I know, yeah. it's, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. It's like bullshit. I just hate, like, my generation is just ass. Sad. I, 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 I think that you're, I, I don't feel that way, but I, I think it's totally fine for you to feel that way. I, I think your generation is getting crushed. Honestly. Yeah, yeah, it's I think, ass. I think, yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. So I, I think they're just trying to do the best they can with the hand that they were dealt. And I was addicted to video games and like video games weren't even that addictive when I was growing up. It's way worse now. So. Nah, nah, nah. Doctor, the best games were Call of Duty, Black Ops 2, fucking all them sh Now it's ass. All right. So, so another place where we agree to disagree. <laughs> but Call of Duty, Black Ops, man. That's the best game of all time, Black Ops 2. Back when I could right, be in game chat and call somebody whatever you should, I want. You should check out a game called... Have you played BG3? No. Baldur's Gate 3? Okay. Anyway, it's, it's okay for people to like different kinds of food and different kinds of games. We don't, I don't know that we need to argue about it, but maybe one day if we really want to throw down, we can... What's your favorite food? Can I, tell, I love Indian food, by the way. Manta paneer is so good with naan. Garlic naan. It's amazing. Yeah, it's good it's, stuff. It's just when I... I can't... I never have leftovers. I put it in my fridge. It stinks up the whole house for like three days, but I love it. It'll, it'll do that. Stink up the armpits too. Yeah. But I love Indian food by the way. But what's your favorite food though? What do you mean by favorite? The food that I enjoy eating the most? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that's what favorite is, right? We particularly like to eat. Um, so back when I was a monk, I detested this particular kind of food that not, I mean, I wasn't a monk, but back in my training days. I started to fall in love with like a rice and lentil dish, dish called kichri, and it's the kind of thing that like it's weird. It's like super bland, but by the end of eating that stuff every single day, I absolutely loved it. It's some of the most enjoyable food that I've eaten. Um, but I'm a big fan of like Tex-Mex, so I, I've got a couple of favorites. So I really like like tacos. I really like uh, pani puri is another Indian food. It's one of my favorite Indian foods. Um, have you ever had, have you ever had what I'm talking about, maca paneer? I, I don't know what the first word is, but I'm pretty sure I've had it. Mata paneer. It's like, it's like this dish. M-A-T-A? M-A-T-T-A-R. Mutter, yeah. Matar, so peas, uh, peas, peas and, and. Yes. Paneer. Paneer. Yeah, sure. yeah, it's a vegetarian dish. It's matar, yeah, yeah. matar paneer. Okay, yeah. Yeah, sure. I love I've had it so good. good. Oh yeah, what, where where are you from, Aiden? Florida. Okay. Where are you from, Doctor? Texas. What part of Texas? I'm in Houston, basically. H Town. Yeah. Houston's cool. I, I think Austin's really fun too. Have you ever been to Austin? I have. I went to school there. You really? Yeah. Sweet. I was actually gonna go to college there, Doctor. That's like where they wanted me to go to college. UT. They wanted me to go to the UT. Yeah, well, I think you would have been great there. Well, the community college first, and then UT. I would transfer. 
Sure. But thank God right. I didn't do it, right? Oh, you want to leave now? Yes. All right. Go ahead. And Is leave. that okay? That's okay. I give you permission. Yeah, I, I appreciate it. I, I, I don't, I'm not trying to pull out, but I also like if, if the point where we're talking about what's my favorite food and stuff. I'm totally down to like hang out sometime. I'll take you out for Indian food. Like that's totally cool. Sweet. I'm not trying to, um, I don't want to reject you. Yeah. And yeah, at yeah. the same time, I'm married with two kids Aww. and it's a weekday. Oh, you got, they got well, I do have constraints on my time. Completely yeah. understand. Um, all right, doctor, I'll let you get to your family cool. and your normal life. Uh, I would Thank like to do this so much. I'd like to do this again. You know, you had me sign a form. I usually hit girls with NDAs. You hit me with like a, a consensual form and stuff. What's going on there? Real last question. Why? Yeah, so it's totally fine. Um, yeah. I think we were doing some back and forth, but then y'all ended up being okay with it. Um, so the main thing is that we just want people to really understand that this is not therapy, right? So we'll, we'll, there's something called informed consent. And that's really the most important part of the form. And then there's also some legal stuff. So like, for example... This may get uploaded to uploaded to YouTube. What's your channel, um, by the way? What's your channel? Healthy Gamer GG. Healthy Gamer. Okay. So th this may get uploaded to YouTube, and so just that you consent for that to happen and stuff like that. So, and then we also have a policy where if you want something taken down, you just message us and we'll take it down. Okay. And generally speaking, people we've had we've been interviewed a couple hundred people, and you know most of Damn. them. Damn. Really? Happy. Wait. Yeah. Are you allowed to talk about your other clients? I don't. I'm saying like I'm probably allowed to. No, no, no. I'm saying like who have you interviewed that I would know in my space? Have you interviewed anybody in my space before? I don't know what what your space is. What do you mean? A streamer, by like a streamer? Yes, we've interviewed many streamers. Train wrecks? I've had several conversations with train wrecks. What do train you, is fantastic. He's amazing. I love train. He's such a good guy. Yeah. At XQC as well. Oh. Is that me or him? Hello? Chat? Yeah. Was that him? All right, I'll let you go. Doctor, you go to sleep. With Aiden? Your... Bruh? Doctor, go to sleep with your ki with your children. Sleep. I didn't... Are you fake freezing, dude? I, I can't hear you, bro. Are you fucking serious? You're using my... I'm hearing robot voice. Get the fuck out. Hold on a second. Bro. Let me see if I can go to... Oh, there we go. We're back. Okay, doctor, go to sleep with your okay. family and stuff. Okay, we'll this talk. is this is this is the universe's way of telling us that this is a good yeah. stopping point. Yeah. Good luck to you, Aiden. You too. I, we'll, we'll, we could do this again. We'll do it again. Yeah, sure. Let's let our our people talk. Okay. All right. All right, doctor. All right. Thank you so much, man. All right.